Yo! Let me get a drink. Symbiotic anomaly, what's up? I'm really confused. What's up, uh, J Flyer and Pimp and Steamy and Hey man, I'm in the market for an espresso machine that could heard you could help. Stop the fucking music. It's 2023! Okay? New Year's resolution? Fucking ban the coffee cowers on site. That's what I'm gonna fucking find you. I'm gonna pour hot coffee on you. Although, if I did do that, that would, <laughs> then like the press might start calling <laughs> the coffee cow killer. Like it might, it might honestly not help the brand at all. If I use coffee as my weapon, mm. yeah, I don't know that that, I, that might not, that might backfire completely. Um, Damar Hamlin. I don't know who's Damar Hamlin. Who's Damar Hamlin? I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not up to date. Damar Hamlin. Football player in critical condition after collapsing on the field. What happened to him? Game suspended. They just ended the game? Yeah, this is serious, huh? Wait, what 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 happened to him? Was he hit? The NFL just stopped the game. I never even heard of that happening. Don't half the players get CTE during games and the NFL says, ah, they'll be all right <laughs> and keep going. Like this must be fucking deadly serious if they stop the game. Most likely a cardiac arrest, but it, it, so it wasn't to do with the game. He just, he just collapsed on the field, huh? God damn, they're getting so many ads. Markers are great, though. He's 24? And he had a cardiac arrest? Why? What? You think it's... Wait, I don't know. <laughs> Why does that happen? Mm. Bro, what? I'm 23, Sag? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Wait, I'm sorry. What you hear about a different 24 year old having a cardiac arrest and you're worried. Your first reaction is worry for yourself because you are one year away from 24. And that means you're guaranteed to get your due cardiac arrest. That's that's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It was a big hit. Okay. Yeah, I'm turning 24 in four months. I'm fucked. Yeah, you're, you're going to get your cardiac arrest that every 24-year-old gets. Uh, <laughs> look at Skip Bayless' tweet. Let me see. Let's see. What is this? What is this? Short video that explains it. What we just witnessed tonight is one of the most rare things we can see in sports medicine. As DeMar Hamlin went down with what appeared to be cardiac arrest after taking this hit on the field. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and on this channel I try to teach you about the sports medicine world and give you some insight into what we see on the field. What we saw happen tonight is not related to any sort of vaccines. This is almost certainly something called commotio cordis, an extremely, extremely rare condition that's one Wait, of the- People are already saying it's a vaccine thing. <laughs> Football player takes a huge hit and collapses on field. People are like, yeah, the motherfucking vaccine got him. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Those things that we typically only think we're going to read five G took him down. Essentially, what can happen is if you have a blunt trauma to the chest that occurs at exactly the right time in the cardiac 
electrical cycle, oh, God. your heart can be sent into cardiac arrest. As Hamlin comes in yeah, here, we can see one this frame square link. hit to the front of his chest. We see him get back up momentarily before ultimately collapsing back down to the ground and requiring CPR on the field. This is a tracing of our heart's electrical activity. Basically, okay. this is one cycle of the heart squeezing. Starts off with this P wave, which is the electrical activity of the atrium at the top of the heart. Just because it's not how my heart works, okay? It's my heart is stronger and more powerful than most, so it just has a different, more powerful rhythm. You know, but for most people, I can see this being the squeezing. Then the QRS complex, which is going to be the ventricles acting. But then the last phase is this T wave, where the ventricle basically depolarizes and kind of resets to get ready for the next cycle. For commotio cordis to happen, you have to suffer this blunt trauma to the chest at exactly the right moment, specifically on this upstroke of the T wave oh my in God. order for the heart to then be sent into this arrhythmia and subsequent cardiac arrest. This is one of those things that not only do you have to have a high enough force, but it has to. It's crazy how badly um, or like how many glitches there are <laughs> in human bodies and brains. <laughs> Like, we're actually made pretty poorly. Like, if God is real, he definitely wasn't... He wasn't on his A game. You know what I'm saying? Like, he did decent with the brain, and then he just sort of fuck around. <laughs> God needs better QA, dude. He needs an update. Uh... We're in beta. Yeah, we're definitely in beta. God was definitely in crunch. 100%. David off, David the five gifted. Mm, mm. The rare double salute. Thank you, David off. Who dat? Thank you for the raid. Oh shit! Wait, wait, wait. 2023. Is it finally time for return of Who dat summer? After we get to this winter, is this the year of Who dat? We're gonna get the fucking return. Hey Fabio, thank you for the prime. Ten months. OJ cereal. Uh, 22 Cynic, they with the 16 months. Good to see you all. Ken Block is dead. Dude, who are, what, who's, I'm sorry, but who is Ken Block? Ken Block is a rally driver who died at 55 in a snow. Are you guys, listen. <laughs> uh, this is very sad. I, you're, you're really throwing a lot of negativity at me for this new year. This is, this is supposed to be a excited 2023 vision. And you're hitting me with every single person. Some of them I don't even know who have already died. Ken Block is so sick. I assume so. Uh, that is sad. He is dead in a snowmobile accident. 55. That is young. Uh, yeah, sad. Sad to see. 2023 is D2016. Let's not get off to it. Let's not get so hasty, okay? Yes, of course people are going to die. It's sad. But I only want, listen, um, we, we don't know if this heart, DeMar Hamlin is not dead. He's probably fine. They'll, I'm sure they figured it out, right? He's, uh, did you see what happened to Jeremy Renner? No. <laughs> Wait, what? Why is it like, <laughs> what, what? You guys are just picking names and you're saying things. Jeremy Renner is dead? not dead legs crushed dude what is going on i feel like i just clicked the go live button you guys hit me with 14 people who are having wait wait what is this year starting off with not jeremy renner jeremy renner also a snow plowing accident dear god the snow must be stopped he suffered and it's also blunt chest trauma that's weird. <laughs> it's like they're all tied together. He is in stable condition. And... They didn't say anything else. 2023, year of the blunt chest trauma. <laughs> no. No! This is not the year of the blunt chest trauma. This is all unfortunate stuff that happened. I am truly and sincerely wishing speedy recoveries to uh, Jeremy Winter and uh, Damar Hamlin. Uh, but let's not extrapolate. Uh, 
smoking that blunt giving me trauma. Yeah, you should really speak it fucking <laughs> one of these serious. <laughs> you should speak at one of these funerals. Yeah. No, you really have the fucking gifted uh, gift of language. Just a, just powerful statements. Um, yo, H Rock, did you see the Queen's death? That was last year, bro. That's old news. Queen's death, yeah, yeah. Plus, okay, <laughs> just to be clear, the Queen's death is not like these. These are all people who are untimely in in serious injuries or death. Okay, the Queen was like 150. She been around. She done lived a privileged full life. The the Queen's death is not anything to like you know, lose your shit over. Um, what about Betty White? Even Betty White. It, I mean, listen, it's sad if Betty White died. I don't know why we're talking about this. I don't know why this is the subject. But Betty White is so old. Old people die. Not me, of course. I live forever. I am a fucking eternal uh, scion. <clears throat> but in general, when you start hitting the 80s and 90s, you die. It, that happens. No, not fuck Betty White, quote HR. That's not what I said. Uh, bro, Betty White has been dead. That's You're not even following. You're not even following the flow. Blade Monkey stayed me 13 months. Uh, over a year, Big A had it. It's been a pleasure. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. You said over a year, Mr. A. It's been a pleasure. And then you used to asterisk. <laughs> and you said tips comically large pirate hat. Like we're doing a forum role play in 2007. <laughs> to you as well, sir. Thank you for that. Thank you for the 13 months. Oh, geez. Now that's the kind of energy we need going into 2023. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What is this? What is this? It's rock. Have you heard of Chris Letang? He has had two cardiac arrests in his career as an NHL defenseman. <laughs> one when he was 24 and one in this past year. That's not even relevant to right now. You are just listing different athletes that have had heart issues. That's not even relevant. Bro, you they, you, you guys, they're, you know, that's the most common cause of death. You understand that? It is some kind of heart problem. So you could list me one million people last year who died of cardiac arrest. That's not, but that's not the tone. That's not the tone we're striking for a new year. And then a fucking Hector comes in and says, Damar Hamlin got cardiac arrest. Thank you. <laughs> it's full circle. It's full fucking circle. I'm glad we have new people joining in to start it all over again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Atrog, did you uh, <laughs> did you hear about Christian Erickson? Wait, no, not Christian Erickson. My blood brother? My European counterpart? He's me if I got into soccer. Wait, Christian Erickson's in trouble? Christian Erickson. Christian Erickson's fine, bro. Oh, this was like in 2021. Um, did you hear about Eric Andre? New stunt went very wrong. You guys, you guys can't be serious that all these people had a problem in the first day of the year. Eric Andre is fine. There's no news on Eric Andre. We, <laughs> bro, Eric Andre is fine. Uh, hey, truck, I applied for an intern mod position in your chat. Sorry, what? <laughs> On the Reddit with my resume, and I got perma banned from Reddit. The whole site, not just your subreddit. <laughs> How should I proceed with the application process? <laughs> what the fuck did you include in such a resume that would get you permanently banned from Reddit? What the hell are you? What the hell did you include? And maybe that's just the kind of moxie we need. <laughs> On our mod team. We haven't had enough mods that shake up the system. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. When you... Dana White was exposed for beating his wife. 
Uh, that. Dana White's the UFC guy, right? The the yeah. That that does not sound surprising. That one doesn't sound like a fucking earth shaking revelation. That one I can believe. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like that's <laughs> that that guy looks like <laughs> he uh, he's just like the poster child for uh, domestic abuse. Or <laughs> yeah, the other way around. Uh, Dana White apologized and said there are no excuses for what happened. <laughs> Bro, you need to go to jail. <laughs> Dude, is he, what the fuck? <laughs> it's funny because some crimes are not like you just do an apology. You know what I'm saying? They're like... Hey, you know what? This one's on me. Like, there's like, there's a time and place for the good apology, but the good apology is not when you beat your wife. That's when you just you get actual punishment. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, what do you? Skip Bayless tweet, he's getting canceled. I don't care about Skip Bayless getting canceled, bro. <laughs> Come on. Really? We got nothing better to do in this brand new year than worry about Skip fucking Bayless, 98-year-old man who hates LeBron? That's ridiculous. That's, that, that is ridiculous, bro. <clears throat> uh, a big A. Oh. Is the year... Wait a minute. Tell me that's not true. Tell me this year is not the year of the cow. <laughs> no, wait. 2021 was the year of the cow. And in the way it was... What's 2023? The rabbit? Mmm. The wily rabbit. Year of the rabbit. What does that mean? Because I... 100% believe in this stuff. Mm, people that are rabbits are believed to be vigilant, witty, quick-minded, and ingenious. So it's a good year for wit. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jefferson, think of the tier one. A uh, bit duty man, think of the seven months. Did you hear about the all-time goat Jeremy Renner is in the hospital? First of all, I want to say one thing. I am very sad that Jeremy Renner is in the hospital, and I wish him a speedy recovery. You would not have called him the all-time goat two weeks ago. You are fair weathering onto a Jeremy Renner pro stance. You are you are that's what you're doing. That is what you're doing. It is what you you miss his app. You were a big user when Jeremy Renner needed users on the Jeremy Renner app. Were you there? Were you on the front lines? When Jeremy Renner people needed people to not make Hawkeye jokes, were you there? No. You were there making the jokes. <laughs> I donated two hundred dollars worth of stars. What more can I do? <laughs> Actually, are stars currency in Jeremy Renner's app? And if so, you did use it. And if so, that's impressive. <laughs> if so, you're a legend. If you are actually a Jeremy Renner stars collector that donates, then then okay, you have actually been a fan. But I myself have always found Jeremy Renner um not not bad, but almost like the definition of as an actor, you know, mid. <laughs> and so I wish him as a human being the speediest recovery, but I'm not going to say he's the I'm not going to like fake feather into he's the goat. He's the greatest actor of all time. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> you guys are not, you guys would not be doing this. He's too recognizable. What does that, what does that mean? Wait, <laughs> wait, Jeremy Renner is not too recognizable to act well. Watch the Danny, oh wait, um, what happened with it? Hawkeye solos Thanos. <laughs> Hawkeye solos Thanos. Hawkeye solos Thanos. You should tell him that. 
You should tell him that. When he's when he's in the hospital in his recovery, worried about his leg, you should walk in and tell him that. Uh Wind River. Wind River was actually pretty good. Was he in that movie? Um what else was Jeremy Renner in? <laughs> What's the most <laughs> this is off this is completely off topic. Not that we had a particular topic, but what was the best thing Jeremy Renner's been in that I liked him in? Jeremy Renner was in I think I liked Wind River. He's in the town. Tag. <laughs> Bro, you guys do not unironically like Tag. You guys like the movie Tag. That is, is that Zoomer thing? Tag. Oh, no. Tag is not goaded. Goaded. Go, you know what goaded means? Greatest of all time. You think Tag is what is the greatest movie of all time? <laughs> it's fucking The Godfather, Schindler's List, and Tag. <laughs> the movie about five grown adults that continue to play a game of Tag. Do you know why this movie was made? There was a story, I think it was in the New York Times, about a real-life group of five adults that did this. And the rights to that story got bought up immediately by Hollywood, which was desperate for ideas, for like a few million dollars. And then they just converted it into a movie that was not even anything like the real life. <clears throat> True story equals goat status. So if I took a shit, and then I made a movie called The Shit... <laughs> And it's about a guy. I got an actor to play me that takes a shit. That's a true... St you guys are saying, yeah, but I'm making an ironic point that that would be a terrible movie. And you would say that's goaded. Would that be an Oscar-worthy, goaded movie? You know what? I really... <laughs> fine. Fuck you, fine, dude. You guys, this is, a, this is not a great... We, we, we gotta fix this in the new year. Okay. When I say something rhetorical, you can't just yep it because sometimes I'm being very obvious. Get Netflix on the horn. <laughs> Netflix is like, holy shit. Holy shit, that's good. Where have you been hiding all our lives? Can we green light a sequel already? Give it the Avatar treatment, dude. I'm having the next five shit movies. Mm-hmm. I'm based and shit pilled. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like some chat messengers are like, they weren't designed for anyone to read them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like some of those people are just like, their brain does not have any filter. They flow it in a chat and they hope, not hope, but just like kind of know that nobody else will read it and I won't read it. But if I do read it, if I do pause the bend in reality there for a second and I read them it, it exposes <laughs> the house of cards that this whole fucking chat is built on which is like 80% absolute lunacy um h -Track will never read this message so I can say something real I love real housewives <laughs> okay great fantastic <laughs> hey uh different topic Slightly off topic, but I wanted to ask if anybody saw the new video. Oh, shit, I have to upload. Ah, oh, shit, I have to keep a streak. Oh, my God. 2023. <gasps> Got to keep the streak alive. Uh, Wow, and the video's a 1 out of 10. Yeah. Let me read this real quick. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 hold. The editing was, yeah, dude, we spent a lot of time on it. Zinjo, shout out to Zinjo. Uh, Quack as well. Quack went through. We went through like second by second. We literally tried. Again, I haven't done this for a lot of videos because, et cetera, et cetera. But, but because I got more time now and I'm trying to like really, you know, put some effort into it, we sat down and we watched the whole thing 
and we went second by second and like this could be better this could be better this could be better let's add this then we would do another cut then we'd sit down and watch the whole thing again like we did it like three times and it was like uh i think it, it just made it sick um jeremy renner level video thank you perry perry thank you that's a huge that's the highest honor you could receive from this chat um uh, anyway i hope you guys enjoyed i am definitely cooking up uh part three <laughs> as the first two have been received so well and uh they could be really fun oh one out of ten means best sorry i don't know people were a one out of ten is like the best thing you can get on YouTube because it means it's done the it's the number one out of your last ten videos and you get a little confetti. The work that and care that went into the videos are parents cool and videos are just fun to watch the stream with. Yeah, and plus it's been a while since the stream, so I think even if you watch the stream, you can easily enjoy this video. I enjoyed it rewatching it, and I I, I didn't even remember some of the runs. Um, did you hear about Mango? No, what happened with Mango? Oh, I did. There was some Smash drama. Uh, Armada put out a twit longer on Mango. Uh, you guys don't know. It's the two like goat candidates of Smash. Armada was uh, super, super, du super duper dominant. Won like everything, and then retired in 2018. And, uh, no, nah, it's not a bad twit longer. It's mostly a twit longer saying like, Hey man, I retired in 2018 and ever since you've been kind of talking shit and like throwing dirt on my name, which mango has done, but in like a really funny mango way. <laughs> so, you know, mango has been like, you know, he, mango makes fun of everybody. And so he made fun of Armada and Armada, you know, he's, he's, a he's a good guy. I've known him for a while and a great player and a legend, but he doesn't have the same sense of humor and, and also, it can be weird because if you're no longer competing, then you can't do anything about it. People just keep talking shit on you. Um, so it's a fair, it's fair, it's a fair critique. And sometimes Mango took it too far. And so he finally twit longered him and just said, "Hey, bro, this is not cool. It's not huge drama. I want you to know it's not huge drama. It's not like fucking Jeremy Renner losing his leg. Um, but also, it's like when Mango says it, it's probably fine. But the problem is, there's a lot of people in Mango's chat who are like." Um, assholes <laughs> who take it and then they run over to Armada stream and they be extra fucking douchey about it. Uh, Mango already apologized. Yeah, I think Mango's super chill. I, I don't. I, Mango did not mean like to hurt Armada's feelings. He's that was not his goal. Uh, but chat hoppers, you know, chat hoppers ruin a lot of things. Luckily, you guys would never chat hop, right? Uh, I think with that kind of humor, you have to be okay to stop doing it if someone says they're uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt that Mango is going to do anything similar. But he'll still probably make some kind of joke. I just... I, I Listen, I've, I've watched a good amount of Mango stream. I've never thought anything he said about Armada was, like, over the line. But the problem is he has to, he has to say some of the same stuff over and over because he streams so many hours consistently. And people keep asking the same questions. And I think people, I don't know, made it more serious than it was. Bro, Aatrox, Stan said you eat poopy. What do you think about that? Do you have a clip? <laughs> it's funny because Stan's... <laughs> Stan's does eat poop. <laughs> like, on our, outside of the joke, like, I don't want to, like, do a little back and forth. He, like, literally eats... He literally eats actual poop. But not human poop, so it's fine. It's fine. Um... <laughs> Uh, Isra, actually, but Al, you know what I said about Stans? I have to also say this. Stans is the smartest human being of our group. <laughs> Stans is much smarter than me and Ludwig. We are dumb. He is smart. Stans is intelligent and I am stupid. Stans is, and maybe that's why he consumes poop. Maybe that's the key. <laughs> maybe the reason for his notoriously high IQ is his diet. And that is what is, that's what's throwing me off. I'm out here eating, um, I'm out here eating Cheez-Its, dude. That's not working. Uh, who's the dumbest? <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, oh, this is, a, what a glorious day this is. 
This is a glorious day. I cannot wait. Speaking of melee drama, speaking of melee drama, Smash Melee drama, I have two things I want to tell you. <laughs> speaking of Smash Melee drama and my dumbest friend, I would like to let you know <clears throat> that I happened to casually play some slippy ranked ladder the other day. Uh, <laughs> off stream. And I happened, just so happened, to run in to a certain Jigglypuff main on the ladder. Hmm, interesting. Now, I'm full grind set. I don't even notice the name. I'm just playing. But then middle of game one, I get a message in my Discord saying, LOL, is that you? <laughs> From a certain John Ludwig Ogren. Let's see. <laughs> Let's just see. <sighs> Where's my... Hmm. <laughs> uh, did I record it? Yes, I recorded it, dude. We were talking shit in Discord from minute one. Once we realized it was each other, we were each other on ladder. So, uh, game one, obviously I win. Smoke, rolled. <sighs> game two, he goes to FD with Puff. Kill myself. <laughs> I lose, obviously. Game three, a nail biter. I, I don't know if I can show this. I guess it's fine. This is my desktop. Game three. I get the down throw. I miss it. I miss it. I miss the border. Almost choke it. Look at my focus. Oh, you can't see my face. Focus, dude. Oh. 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 It's down to the water. Boom. Boom, baby. Instantly calling. Ring, ring. <laughs> First thing I do, the second I win, I go. GG's. Oh, GG's. Kill yourself. No, GG's. You I don't know who was toxic there. I don't know. I didn't. I can't analyze the details of it. All I know is that I won. R.I.P. Bozo, and I had to let him know. Still a Starcraft player, heart, bro. He fucking camped the shit out of me with back airs, dude. I had to say something. Uh, what rank are you? I'm plat. I don't know what Lud's at. I think he's also plat. Honestly, I think actually almost. I think off red is all plat except for stands, who doesn't really play. Um. Absolutely molded by StarCraft at 100%. 100%. Um, anyway, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely happy that I won that. <sighs> no matter who you think was toxic there, we can all agree that both sides need to come together and be more kind. It's so true. <laughs> no matter who's at fault, okay? Maybe I was too gracious of a winner. That's possible. It's possible I was too gracious of a winner, and I should. We, uh, the point is, we should all put it. We should all apologize, and we should come together, and we should just agree to be more kind. Okay. Uh, to be fair, he plays Puff, dude. Exactly, dude. It's so it's so nerve wracking. You're playing Sheik Puff, and there's just a thousand back airs, and I just oh, I was like, I'm gonna lose. 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 It's gonna be so annoying if I lose. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose, and then I won. Um. So I'm glad that happened. Just wanted to put that out there, you know, into the world. <clears throat> uh, I had a lot of fun playing. I, I, I'm taking a break though. After I won that game and I won a couple more and I was plat, I just I quit because it's addicting. First of all, number one, and then second of all, it's um, it's uh, some players are so goddamn annoying. <laughs> Some players on fucking ranked ladder are so god there's like a fucking army of uh Luigi's and fucking game and watches and 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 campy puffs and it's just like I just want to fight Falcos. I wish there was a button to only fight Falcos. 
stream ranked i think we're going to i think lud and i uh, are gonna do a stream this week probably wednesday where we both start brand new accounts play fox only we both have terrible foxes me and ludwig have, an, have a lifelong f sort of agreement to never improve our foxes <laughs> Because we play great dittos with each other. And if we if either of us gets better, it'll ruin the balance. Perfectly balanced. And so we will um, we'll play Fox and see how far we can get in like, I don't know, an hour or two. Um, oh, by the way, if anybody's interested in seeing me play Melee, I did a show called The Reads with Scar and Toph. Uh, People's Champ, if you want to know the emote. And uh, they're the legends of the Melee community. They do, uh, they do all the casting for the big tournaments. And uh, I went over to, I flew up, I flew to NorCal and I played Melee with them all day and we recorded it and talked about life and philosophy and uh, played games and it was fun. We had a great time. So check it out if you're interested. Enough about Melee though. Uh, I wanted to say one more thing. Uh, I beat up Ludwig in the meta game. <laughs> it's the next 10 items in the list. Beat his ass, dude. Pow, 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 pow on ladder for points. God damn, dude. Sorry. I just, I have another next thing, but seriously, it needs to be said. Um... Uh, check this out. Check this out. Oh, wait, the nose came off. This is from my family, which is awesome. This is super sick. Like my mom literally colored the clown. She bought the Hitman thing, and I don't know. It was really nice. Uh, so I gotta find a spot for it in the stream. I'll just put it right here for now. And uh, yeah, I gotta find a spot for it in the background somewhere. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, it's sick. I've been feeling uh. Slightly hitman pilled when I was working on the on the video with Zinjo. Definitely want to think of some cool ideas. Um, uh, you should post your NFT on Twitter. That doesn't. I don't have an NFT. <laughs> Peak of Prisma, thank you for the prime. Late night wife alert, thank you for the uh, 14 months. C Bunny, thank you for the 16 months. Electrics, thank you for the 27 months. What's up, Big A? I'm driving home Poggies. <laughs> what a terrible thing to be your last words in a car accident, okay? Drive safe. Please do not fucking, do not be typing in Twitch chat while driving. If Poggies is the last thing you type, dude, just be safe. Don't, don't Twitch and drive. God's safest driver. <laughs> I guess it's better to die with a Pockies than a ch than a Sag. You know what I'm saying? A Sag would be a terrible way to go. A Pockies is like, he died how he lived. You know? Having a good old time. Going down, going 70 down the freeway. <laughs> what did he say? Atrioc in one hand and a Miller Lite in the other. Life is good. <laughs> No, no, that's not life is a good moment. That's a terrible, that's a terrible, obvious, obviously it's a terrible way to be. No, you don't, that's, that would be fucking California's safest driver though, I will say. The only thing, dude, LA, LA drivers are the fucking absolute, worst. everyone says this about everywhere, but I've lived everywhere. I've lived in 13 states, uh, multiple countries. NorCal and SoCal, I believe LA is like the, gotta be one of the worst. It's it's just gotta be. Ain't nobody uses a fucking turn signal in their life. Um, they just don't do it. They don't. They don't. They don't turn signal. Don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, they just yeah yeah. You know what? Someone said they have good skills but don't follow any laws. Yeah, I guess they're not like mechanically terrible. Although some probably are, but they just don't follow the rules. <laughs> And like it's a lawless system without rules. Bro's never been to India. 
Okay, you got me. Yes, Mumbai. The Charles of Mumbai probably have a, a less uh, good traffic laws than LA. But yeah, that's not. I'm I'm talking about within my fucking sphere of what I've seen, dude. Yes, I've never driven in India. I've never been to India. Um. Did you see that LA police have a drunk driving problem with their own officers? <laughs> Would not surprise me. Bro, I literally, I was with my parents. Uh, where were we? Where were we? We were driving. I don't know. We were at a stoplight. And um, like, like we, <laughs> we're, we're pulling up to a red light and there's a car in front of us. It is a red light. Okay? The car in front of us just goes, eh, fuck it. Blazes through the red light. Now, it's been deep red. It was deep red for a while. The car just blazes through. We look to our left. Literally right next to us watching the whole thing is a cop. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> you, you, did you see that? That dude, that dude just blazed through. I mean, that was, we were looking right at, and the cop, <laughs> the cop does fucking, my dad literally rolls down the window because my dad cares. I'm saying, you know, let's not narc, whatever. Nothing, nothing happened. The guy's an asshole, but I don't want to get the fucking cops involved. My dad literally rolls down the window and he's like pointing. <laughs> And the cops do nothing, dude. Literally nothing. <clears throat> uh, Dad tracks a narc. My he's just, you know, he's military. He likes seeing rules swallowed. Uh, Peepo G moved to LA to kill people while driving legally. That literally has nothing to do with anything I said. <laughs> that you've completely taken none of the... <laughs> You've, I have spoken words and you have not internalized any of them. You've not put it together in any coherent fashion. Um, and also, you know what? It's not narc behavior to want the police to enforce sane traffic laws. <laughs> okay? If the dude was smoking a J and my dad was like, hey, that's different. If the police are stopping people from running red lights and killing people then I think that's actually a good use of their time. That's a good, that, that's what they should be doing. That's a better use of what they're... Um, uh, your cue to run the red. <laughs> that would have been funny. And we were waving at them like, what's going on? And then if they don't do anything, we just fucking floor it. <laughs> oh, well. Guess it's not getting enforced. Uh, Salty Barra, what'd you say? You said nine months of Prime. Love the content. Looking forward to more of this year. Really enjoy learning to become a Sigma Hitman gamer marketer economist. Although I regret learning your one million nicknames from chat. Doesn't sound like you regret it because you're already dumping it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm glad you're enjoying and I hope you have a good time um, I am excited for this year as well so here's what I want to talk about for today Okay, today we got a lot of stuff to do uh, most of it is going to be community pretty soon uh, I have not finished the predictions 2023 I'm very close I think I'm at slide I don't know 42 no even hard. I'm at slide 50 uh, and I, and they're fast. It's, I think it's good, but I'm not quite done. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. I think, I think I just want to clean up the, the graphics. Um, and so I thought instead of that, first of all, there's a couple of videos we want to watch. Um, we'll do targeting. It's fine. It's no big deal. Uh, I wanted to do new year's resolutions. I, everyone's sort of been doing it, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to, I wanted to talk with you. Let's have an honest dialogue. And see if there's any New Year's resolutions for me and this stream. And one of them should be probably to do the Marketing Mondays on time. <laughs> it's a perfect lead-in. It's a perfect lead-in, bro. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So what? 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 If I if 2023 New Year's resolutions. Let's make this way bigger. 2023. Atriox stream upgrade 2023. Number one, marketing Mondays on Monday. Now, let's be let's let's caveat this. I cannot do a fully produced 
Marketing Monday that I'm happy with every week. I just can't do it. Uh, without literally abandoning fucking... <laughs> the word fucking there is operative. Abandoning my wife <laughs> and uh, and off-brand. Uh, so I just can't... So... Mm. But I think twice a month and then wins and fails every week. So wins and fails every week without fail. There should just be no reason. Wins and fails are not that that difficult to set up uh, i i literally read every day and i take notes on what i think should be a wins and fails and so by the end of the week i always have enough i just need to organize them um and then yeah maybe if we have like i don't know 20 eps a year of true marketing monday what would that be it's like bi-weekly um finish scorn is not on here Paper Mario Day is happening, okay? I don't like it, but I know you guys, if I skipped it, you literally wouldn't shut up for the rest of the year. <laughs> this is sort of non-negotiable. I've been I've been hijacked by terrorists. That's May 23rd or 22nd? I don't remember. I think it's 22nd. Um, Paper Mario Day is happening. Popathon 2 with Quincy. Is that something I can actually commit to in 2023? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a that's a tough one. Cause let's wait. Let's get through things I actually I'm gu I'm guaranteed to do. This is a TBD. Let's do TBD. TBD. Okay, number three, 2023, Silk Song, 100% run on stream. Now that relies on this game coming out, but if so, 100%. Silk Song start to finish. That's one of the things that makes me so excited for this year, particularly. Um, literally cannot wait for that. It's number four. Um, Hades 2. Is that this year? Is Hades 2 this year? I thought it was 2024. Hades 2 release date. Hades 2. What? Early 2023? Oh, shit. Hades 2 on stream. Might do something with Lud for this. Lud and I played Hades 1 together, and it was quite fun. We might do something with this. Um, I am doing Japan Trip. February. Two weeks to one month. Probably two weeks. Honestly, for me, it'll be two weeks. Like 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. Japan trip. 10 days. February. Uh, I want to go to Hokkaido. Go to Hokkaido for Hitman reasons. Uh, yeah, all the boys are going to Japan. Everybody. Everybody like around us in LA is going to Japan. Um... Go to Hokkaido for many reasons. Yeah, I'll kill someone. I'll probably kill Aiden. I'm going to kill Aiden. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kill Aiden in Hokkaido. It'll be cool. It'll be fucking sick. Uh, what, what else? I need to talk about Marketing Monday more. Wait, Marketing Monday resolutions. So I love doing wins and fails. Um, I want... Hmm, I, need, I need more like... Oh. Dude, make a fully produced Marketing Monday for VOD only. That's been one of my goals for a long time. I want to try making a fully produced, well-made, like, clips timed to my words with, like, real knowledge and, like, everything set up. And I want to make it for YouTube. That's what I want to do. I want to do just one and try it out. Because... Um, I, I really like the live format. I would never stop doing the live format. I think live is what's, I think it makes the Marketing Mondays cool that I can react to chat or I can um, speak more like, just like like a person, you know? I, I think it's, I think it makes it, the, 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 the target I'm trying to hit or the niche I'm trying to hit with Marketing Mondays is uh, taking complex things and making them more understandable 
for people that are to get them interested. You know, that's that's what I like to do. I like I like that step of the process where people are like, "Wow, I didn't know this was actually interesting," and then they get into it. That's that's what I like. I think that's cool. Um, because obviously the the other area is crowded. There's a million in-depth channels that'll tell you the fucking specific statistics, super stack. But I, I think I can do. I think I can do something like this. So, uh, there we go. Mm. Mm. Um, scrub daddy interview. I'll. Here's what I'll honestly say. Let's put that on here. Um, make an honest pitch. Make an honest pitch to scrub daddy guy, I won't say his name, uh, to get him to sincerely come on the show. If you guys don't know, he is the one that asked me to come on Marketing Monday. He reached out out of the blue, but then he just went on so many vacations and he, he has gone through so many secretaries. <laughs> And every time I message them, they like tell me he's doing like, I just, I get the sense he's either too busy or no longer wants to. So, um, well, you know what I was thinking? Like, what if I actually made a video <laughs> of me? Like, I don't know, using scrub daddy or like, like if I made a, if I made something, do you know what I'm saying? If I made like a video of, uh. Yeah, like shilling scrub daddy, but like honestly, I don't know, it's a joke. And then I send it to him, and I'm like, bro, I'm taking this serious. Because I, I don't know, maybe you got the sense that I wasn't serious about this. Um, yeah, like a leech video. I need to ask who that. <laughs> Come on, the program. Ask who that how to leech. He didn't leave me on red. That's the thing. If he left me on, if I asked him and he left me on red, this would all make sense. But he reached out, super fucking excited, said he wanted to do it. I said, "Awesome. What time?" He says, "Uh, just coordinate with my secretary." <laughs> and then he puts me on a, a new thread with the secretary. Then I message the secretary, and she goes, "Okay, he is um in Israel for the next four weeks." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, uh, that's cool. When so he's gonna be back on what date? And we could do it then." And she's like, okay, uh, yeah, that, that sounds decent. Um, then two weeks later, she's like, okay, he's actually traveling after that to Europe. <laughs> and then, so I don't know, he just keeps fucking. And then I messaged back like a, like a month and a half later. And then that email was deactivated. Her, hers, his was still fine. And then he responds and he goes, oh, I have a new secretary. <laughs> and he, that, and he does it to someone else. So it's like, what the fuck, dude? I, 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 mm. Um, this year you could have marketing Monday guests or interviews. Who would be a good marketing Monday guest or interview? Who would who would who would be an interesting marketing? I mean, Scrub Daddy's one of them, but I don't know. SBF, <laughs> SBF and Elon, bro. Yeah, you're right. No, it's true. Let's get Elon Musk on there. Do you know it's hilarious? Wait, I don't know. I'd probably I'd never be able to find it. Um. Somebody sent me this. Mm. Wait. People type. Bring back King Delroy. Maybe. But one second. Need water. No more Yep Coke. How about that? I'm getting a drink. Sometimes when you talk nonstop for an hour straight, you want to get a drink. You're not doing cocaine. Christ. 
Uh, Addy withdrawals. Yep. <laughs> no, I don't have Addy withdrawals. What about Mr. Wonderful? I would have loved to have Mr. Wonderful on. Um, not that he's asking, <laughs> but he does a lot of stuff. He does like a lot of YouTuber stuff. Uh, he's generally available. You know what would be interesting to get is Damon John. Because Damon John has a relatively small YouTube channel and does a lot of collabs. Um, but the problem is uh, Mr. Wonderful like shilled FTX hard. And then after after um, SBF was like proven fraud, he still like defended him and did a bunch of things. And he was secretly being paid for it. He's kind of a scumbag. Like I, I, I went from thinking he was like funny bad to like kind of like just bad bad. Um, I didn't, I really, I had, I left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh. Oh, more punch streams. Okay. I could be down for that. Wait, let me call him right now. If he answers, we'll do them. If he doesn't, the problem with punch is he messages me frequently, but only at weird hours and only complete nonsense. He sends me gibberish. He sent me, hey, H this is out of the blue on December 1st. Hey, H Rock, I'm really happy for, you, happy for you that off-brand is going so well and you're making the kind of money to pay off your student loans and live the life you want. That said, with success, money, and no kids comes being content or even bored. Please don't be Mr. Cool Guy at the office and go to crazy cocaine parties and risk throwing away your career. Drugs are lame, man. And even messing around with it once can fuck everything up. It isn't worth it. Put your money towards a house or even a vacation, but not a party with your work buds to get blasted on cocaine and hookers. It really is very uncool. Love the streams. <laughs> this is out of nowhere. This is like a month of not. <laughs> he just, and then it was like at, at fucking 3 a.m. It doesn't, none of this tracks, dude. Then. What, like, fucking 17 days later, at 2.15 a.m., he says, do you keep big, fat stacks of cash at your desk? Like, just a wad of money to look at. <laughs> That's it. That's the message. Like, what is it? Well, I don't understand these questions. <laughs> I do, of course. Yes, of course. I, I lift my monitor on a, a thing made of money so I can look at it. Uh, <laughs> let me call him right now. There's no shot. He's actually, he's offline. He's offline. He's the king of the common man. Yeah. You know what? Maybe he is either way. I would love to do punch streams again, but it has been extremely hard to organize. And part of that is because he, he works, you know, he works. He's got, uh, but he's got like weird hours. He like, like works night shifts, I think, or something. Um, so that's tough. That's tough. Stream Sharks? I don't know. Stream Sharks, the problem with Stream Sharks was that it was, it was a sponsored event. Legitimately, it might even be like, I couldn't do it without Discord sign-off or something. I don't know. Um, and Discord, uh, they paid for it and it's done. Um, I could do a variant. I would love, I mean, I would love. The problem is I'm not yet big enough to justify the use of our time. Sorry about the burp. But I would love to do an off-brand production of a live uh, Shark Tank style stream live. I think that would be fucking awesome. Uh, I would I would love to do that. But the problem is I just don't think uh, – I wouldn't want to ask it of, of our squad and my boys because I'm just not – I'm not yet big enough to justify it. We were really – we're trying to – not that off-brand has a size limit. It's just like the way I'd want to do it would cost more than my views would generate. Um, hey, Shark, do you still want to do the idea where the stream was the community songs? Yeah, I still want to do that. I want, what I want to have for my stream, I want to actually put this on here. This is, a, this is something I need to drive forward. Because if I don't drive it forward, no one really will. So I have to fucking, I got to do it. I want a stream intro. Cool stream intro basically i want to be able to click go live five minutes before i actually on, on streams 
because then I can avoid the thing where I'm answering the same questions 14 times as people filter in. I want to have that. And I want to have it be like a TV. I want, isn't, in, my, in my mind, this is how I see it, all right? You open the stream, and there's like a TV in the stream, and it's playing different community songs randomly from all time. So like every time you tune in and it's the intro, it's different. It's just randomized different community songs. And then, um, so like you might, you know, it could be like uh, the Popathon songs or it could be the monkey ball songs or it could be, it could be anything. It's just like any songs. And so every time it's like a different random fun memory. And then it goes and it switches through things and then it goes and then it goes live or like starting soon or whatever. And then that would be sick. Yeah, kind of like a community radio. Yeah. Um, I thought you meant songs from the show community. That would be incredibly stupid. <laughs> no, I did not mean that. Cool stream intro with TV thing. Was it kind of ties in with my this like this? You know how when I change scenes, I get a like the whole thing is kind of like a TV thing. What's your sleepy rank? I'm plat. Platinum. And probably not going higher. I'm probably a plat boy. Um, just because I am very wary of getting hooked on the grind for that. Um, Ori? Oh, okay. Ori? Well, here's the thing about Ori. I don't want to promise it. I, here's a, here's, oh, let me do that one thing. Wait. Actually, I'm just fucking zero. Fucking number zero of all time. Keep promises. That means, that doesn't mean I always hit everything. That means if I say I do it, I keep it. So this, this is more about changing my language. Because I have a tendency, and I fully admit this, is I, I look at everything through very optimistic rose-colored glasses. And when I say to six different people that I will get something done, in the next day or so, or whatever, in a week, whatever. And uh, then I, in my mind, I always assume I can do it all. And then I can't, and then I get stressed and then I get sad. So what I want to do is just only promise something that I know I can do. That's what, that's what I, so what, what that really means is I need to say no more. I need to say, say no more, say no more and say no more. Well, no. It is, it isn't even close. Say no more. Mm. Um, <clears throat> God of War playthrough, zero chance. I can say that right now. I will not play God of War on stream. I've played a little more God of War. Uh, the, I was playing God of War on the TV in my living room until Ari took it over to play Slay the Spire. Ari has recently got into like the second video game of her life <laughs> uh, because my brother and his girlfriend told her about it for the Switch uh, over Christmas. And so she's like super into Slay the Spire. She loves it. I actually would love to let her do a Slay the Spire stream on my channel because she's very funny to watch play. She gets so excited about every card and <laughs> and she like grinds through the thing. I don't know. She's been she's been she's been addicted. Um, so we might do that. Maybe, maybe. This is, again, not a promise because I can't speak for her. Maybe more Ari streams. Slay the Spire. Mexican candy stream. She got a bunch of tasty Mexican candy. If you want, if you want to do a stream about it, we'll figure that out. Etc. Okay? Uh, what, do you need me to upload? Yes, I do need... Uh, yes, uh, Quack, I do need you to upload. I need to upload. We have to keep our streak. Upload, 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 upload. I don't know what the thumbnail is. I don't I don't have a good idea for the thumbnail, to be quite honest. Um, I don't know. I don't want no, I'm not doing a thumbnail stream. <laughs> hey, number nine. <laughs> no more thumbnail streams. <laughs> This is a failure of planning. If 
Thumbnail streams are bad. That means I did not delegate correctly or I did not work on something correctly. That being said, one more for the fans. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. The thumbnail is, it's the Sporkle quiz with me, Stans, and Lud. What, what would the thumbnail be for that? Uh... What would the thumbnail be for that, dude? I literally have no fucking idea. Steel stances for sure. Just different IQs on our faces. Ugh. What What have I... Wait, let me just do one quick check. What have I done in the past for, like, me stands LUD streams? What is the best performing on my channel me stands LUD video? That's a good question. Best performing on my channel, me stands LUD video. This one? Bros vs. Pro, I guess. Not just us three, though. Mm. I'm going pretty far down here to find... Advice but funny is me and... Lud. Minecraft speedrun pro am. <laughs> that was such a fun video. That was that was so, it's so funny that like me and Linkus are. Oh, by the way, congrats to Linkus. Got engaged. <laughs> sheesh, 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 sheesh. Drakes for Linkus. Most New Year's resolutions are for a year, but my New Year's resolution is for a lifetime. Jeez, he's got bars too. He's a poet. My goodness. Dude's got W Riz. The fucking Rizzler. Uh. Congrats to Lingus and Maisie. We love them both. Um, Lingus doesn't follow me back. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? The fuck? Lingus, you do not follow me? I'm calling him literally right now. I cannot believe this. We, I literally just sent him a customized video that he asked for for his fucking birthday. I'm calling him literally this second. No, he's not on Discord. He's offline. I'm going to call his fiance. <laughs> I'm calling Maisie right now. This is the... <laughs> oh, wait. Link is called. Linkus! What? Yo, did you try and call me? Yes, yes, I did try to call you. It's urgent. <laughs> What's up, man? It's the most important <laughs> thing in my life or yours right now, okay? Okay, uh-huh. Obviously, congrats on the engagement or whatever, but, like, let's get serious Thank here. You. There's something <laughs> okay. very important. You don't uh -huh. follow me back on Twitter? Did you unfollow me? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Linkus, I'm literally showing off your engagement to my entire stream praising you from the high heavens and they know uh -huh. you don't even follow me on fucking twitter i follow you on twitter no what do you, you mean? do not follow I me follow bro. you on twitter you do not you don't follow look at it right now i swear <laughs> i follow you on twitter legitimately oh my god we've been friends for like two years no. now we've hung out a I... bunch of times and you haven't followed me one time I swear to God, oh, Elon is behind God. this. I I know I have followed you on Twitter. Okay, I have. Not. I have Elon, interacted with your tweets. It's fucking Elon, dude. It is Elon. <laughs> <laughs> he saw your marketing Mondays oh, and was like, "God, God damn this it, it's up. Elon." He's trying to get back at me. That makes a lot of sense, dude. He's oh, jealous my God. of true friendship. Well, I really hope you're maybe right now. I feel seriously really bad. For I'm, you I'm obviously maybe, <laughs> but you are not following me. <laughs> That's a fact. I will, I will, I, I will be following you. I swear, I do stay following you. Um, and I didn't want to say huge congrats, huge congrats. I, you know, it's weird to do it on stream, but huge, huge congrats to you and Maisie. That's, that's fucking awesome, man. We miss you out here. Thank you. Birthday. Yes. 
Yes, thank you. Yes, you're definitely invited to the wedding, by the way. Oh, great. I have a long <laughs> speech, so make sure to give me a lot of time. Give me an Good. hour, two hours. I'm going to go into <laughs> details. Hours. We're talking about Minecraft, Hitman, you know, Do you think Hitman you can tell everyone what an elusive target is? By any <laughs> that's, chance? that's included, too. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, brother. Uh, much love. Just uh, be sure to follow me back. Uh, Prime <laughs> sub, drop tier three, you know, whatever it takes. And we'll talk yeah. again soon. Uh, Sad amazing. Sounds too. good. Bye. Yeah, I will. Bye bye. Sound a little sick to you guys? Maybe that's it. Maybe you got so sick you couldn't understand what was going on. Uh, sounds like you're all invited. Refresh the page. Bro, someone said refresh the page. He followed you back and he literally did it. <laughs> it's going to be really funny if he still doesn't do it. <laughs> Is he going to be after that call? He just literally still doesn't fucking do it. And it's like two weeks from now, and I'm like too awkward to ask about it again, but it's like you didn't do it. You didn't follow me back. I'm just going to sit here for the rest of the fucking stream, bro. Where the fuck is the follow? I'm losing my mind. Your phone is there. You just called me on it. Bro, are my tweets that bad? I'm refreshing one more time. I literally have to call him back right now. Maisie, you're in chat. You're with Linkus. I've, I had banger tweets. Like this one of my clown. Good gift. I did not link German stream key. There's one of my cat. How could you unfollow? You see Sheb cat. That's a banger. There's the one with, <laughs> with stands on my tattoo. Christmas streets no Andrea one. Uh, what is this? My New Year's resolution is two forty p. Oh, there I'm in the background. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, get those fucking glizzies away from them. Yeah, let's go. He's calling. Oh, he is calling. Yo. What's up? Bro, do you see my screenshots? Are you sending screenshots? Wait. I said to you, I literally haven't touched the button yet. I opened it up and it says following. I haven't, un <laughs> I'm not going to unfollow you to refollow you. I swear I opened it up. It says follow. I have not touched it. I have not touched it. I am following you. This is the screenshot he sent me. Is this a fucking Elon Musk situation? I, like, like literally, like, does it still say I'm not following you? Because I haven't Elon touched. I involved? swear. Did that motherfucker <laughs> over at Tesla get involved in our friendship? I swear, I have. I did. I was not. Elon! I just did not just now click on it. You can go back in some stupid third-party website to track Twitter mm -hmm. things. I guarantee you, I've been following you for a long time. I did not follow you. It was already following you. Let's see. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> Let's control Atrioc. <laughs> you follow Quack. <laughs> you got Quack on here. You got Hassan. Your best friend Hassan is on here. Bro, I'm scrolling. I swear to God, I'm scrolling. It, no, do, do not go through my Prezzo, follow. Prezzo. I'm, I'm getting nervous. Wait, do not go through all my follows. You follow Notch. Wait. Big fan of everything Notch has ever done or said. I know that about you. Uh, <laughs> This you account goes back to Elon Musk. Did he replace himself? Is Elon <laughs> Musk in your follow list instead of me? Did he fucking swap it out? Is that the saga here? <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not on here. But you see my screenshot. I haven't touched it. I have literally been following you for a long time. You see the following text. <laughs> I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You follow. Twitter. I don't have your stream up. I really hope you're kidding. I'm scared you're going to find some, <laughs> like, I don't know, some OnlyFans girl coming up all of a sudden. I'm going to have to explain it Imagine to Maisie. Like and I'm like, listen, this is an old pages of OnlyFans girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look at your whole list, bro. I went top to bottom. It's all fucking speedrunners and Elon Musk and streamers from like 2013. And I'm not on here. What? Oh, I'm telling you, you like got in between us. I like you, you know, so if you strange. want me to right now, I can unfollow you to refollow you if you want to see. Don't break the, the streak up. if you think it's really <laughs> <laughs> Don't break the streak, Linkus. Keep it alive. 
uh all right well this is this is i'm gonna go in, i'm gonna investigate this i'm gonna talk to elon we're gonna get involved okay oh, i am there near the top <laughs> wait near the top huh suspicious uh wait uh did i pass it and you could here. probably control f it i did but all it gives me is quack <laughs> Young man, Wait, really? Atriac. When you search H Rock, you find Quack. Yeah, because Quack's bio <laughs> says like H Rock has dexterous piano fingers, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> um, very odd, very very odd. All right, well, I believe you. I, and you know what that means is that Elon Musk is personally involved and does care and is like actually trying to cause ruckus. And I'm gonna get to the that bottom of it. That is true. I do feel better now. The holy crap! I really thought I I followed you. <laughs> All right, brother. Are you sick a little bit? Your voice sounds getting a little stuffed. Are you all right? Yeah, I got, I got, I got COVID. I've been like in bed for the past two days. I uh, today's the first day I feel kind of okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you're trying to guilt trip me for calling you and ask, calling you a piece of shit for a Twitter follow, because <laughs> I don't feel bad at all. all right? It's not. This is very no. serious. <laughs> it's important to me. Okay, so don't try. Not you should be feel worse because you're making me feel bad, even though I shouldn't feel bad because a Twitter follow is very important. No, if I wanted to guilt trip you, I'd mention the fact that our internet has been gone for three days, not the COVID part, because I think the internet part's worse. <laughs> yeah, you've been stuck with no internet and COVID for three days? Yeah, no, I lost internet on my birthday after my stream. I called A&T, and they were like, the first day we can come is at 8 p.m. on the 3rd. So four days without internet. I went out, and I bought a Blu-ray and the entire season of Avatar The Last Airbender. So I've been sitting and watching that the whole time. <laughs> That's actually kind of hype, though. <laughs> that is kind of fun. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Internet monopolies suck. Yeah. I would say it's better out here, but it's not. So <laughs> there's nowhere you can go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It sucks, man. But I uh, hope yeah. you feel better. Is, I don't want yeah, – that. thank you. I don't want to hold yeah. you up anymore, though. I know you're literally in the middle of your stream. So yeah, we're you, go and, uh, you go and do this stuff. All right. All right, man. Much love. Peace. Elon fucking Musk, dude. I can't believe that motherfucker. This time he's gone too far. Okay, I could, I could, I could, uh, what's the Brita line? <laughs> I could forgive racism, <laughs> but I can't forgive, uh, <clears throat> uh, Imgerlink. What is this? Boop, 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 boop. Elmo's world. Oh, yeah. It does show Link is following me. Before he followed us on. <laughs> Get fucked, dude. Get fucked, dude. Bro, Hassan was talking sweet at the party. <laughs> what did Hassan say? I'm trying to remember. I had a couple beers, so I'm not sure I fucking locked it all down. But he was fucking... He was... <clears throat> he was talking, dude. He's people talking. Uh... <laughs> I saw XQC walk up to um, Nick Nick Falco's wife and say, I recognize you from somewhere. And I don't know if this is like some game he plays or some Riz he's trying to do, but he clearly doesn't because she is never – oh, not wife. I'm sorry, not wife. It's not a leak. She, girlfriend. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm extrapolating for myself. Nick's girlfriend, Zipper 2. Uh, anyway, he walks with the Zipper 2. It's, it's literally no. He's, he's going to think, oh, God, he's going to message me about this. It's literally his girlfriend. Uh, it's, it's literally actually not a leak. He's not married. The dude's like fucking 22. Uh, anyway, his girlfriend, actually, she walks up to her and goes, I recognize you from something. And then she goes, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 I do. And then me and Nick are both like, she's never been in any content. <laughs> like, no, you, you don't. And then, uh, Nick's like, yeah, but you stayed with us that one time and she was there. So you probably met her in person. And then actually she goes, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> No, it's something else. Let me think about it. 
And then we're all like, no, it's nothing else. There's no, there's no other place that you have seen Zipper 2. Okay, there's no online recording. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's like, oh, man, it's like on the tip of my tongue. Like, I'm going to get it. And he kept dragging this off. He's like doing his whole fucking song and dance about it. And it's like, bro, you don't recognize her from anything other than that. Uh, streamer Awards. We suggested that. We said streamer awards. He goes, nope, not that. He's like, have you been in a video or something? <laughs> and she's like, no, no, I haven't. Uh, yeah, they probably met at Nick's wedding. Yeah, you're you're fucking right, dude. It was a, it was an actually awesome wedding, and you guys should have been there. Should have shown up. Um. Oh, <laughs> I remember what Hassan said. Hassan came up to me. <laughs> When I was getting a beer, and he's like, hey, I noticed you didn't cover Balenciaga on Marketing Monday. I guess you support pedophilia. <laughs> that, was, that was the first thing his son said to me, bro. That's the first thing he said to me. Which, by the way, you must be really watching Marketing Monday. You must be getting into the fucking details. You cover every... And then, key, key to the fucking story, he was wearing a Balenciaga shirt. He was wearing a Balenciaga shirt when he said this. <laughs> Just to get 100% clear. It was one of the, it was a 360 Balenciaga fucking. <clears throat> he's just bantering. I know. He's funny. He's funny as hell. Uh, I think he's going to Japan too. I'm actually really, that would be really fun. Uh... Yeah, I hope, I hope he does. I hope more people come to Japan. I think it'll be fun. Because all I know is that the original impetus for this trip is obviously Ludwig's diehard obsession with Japan. But he's actually going to fuck off and do his own thing for 90% of the trip. And I think he's also going to spend like two weeks in a fucking commune with Connor VA. So, you know, I want there to be a lot of people there so we can do some fun stuff. Um. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, oh, you, you sent a thumbnail for the Sporkle vid? Uh, where is it? Where did you send it to my where 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 where? Where 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 where? Oh, this is pretty fun. Oh, I like this. Okay. Uh, uh yeah, this is... uh This could be good. I'll just run this for now while Quack figures out whatever something. I'll just thumbnail V2. What do you guys think? I'll, it's this. And I'll just call it, who is my dumbest friend? <laughs> right? I think it's pretty good. It, like it's, it's not like, like the best thumbnail of all time, but I think it's good and it services it and it gets me to upload now. And we could change it later. It's not like I've never changed the thumbnail before. I change thumbnails all the fucking time. I'm the thumbnail change whisperer. Yeah, I'll just upload it right now. Uh, documents. It's a really good video. Uh, uh, Rez and Chill edited it and did a great job. Got all the funniest moments. And then, like, timed them really well. <laughs> he, he, like, and he's, like, someone saying, like, He'll cut it from like Stan saying, oh, that was an easy one to like me and Lud going, what the fuck is it got? You know, like on the same question. Uh. <sighs> Should have one be a negative score? Yeah. Yeah. Can you make a version where Ludwig's is negative? Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> Oh, I have to save it as fucking .jpg. All right, let's see if that works. Downloads, dumbest friend. Actually, this is not a great thumbnail because I need to zoom it in more. Thumbnail stream? Oh, we love a thumbnail stream. One second. It's too small. It also does not have the trademark purple border that signifies an interact video. 
which you have made a grave error with that. No joke, make the heads comically large. I agree with you, 100%. <laughs> it's not a joke. The heads should be comically large. I think this is the good base of a thumbnail, but it needs to be far improved. And that's the time for a perfect day one pre New Year's resolution thumbnail stream. <laughs> okay, so all we gotta do first of all is zoom this bad boy. Zoom it in, dude. Honestly, you fucked me because they need to be closer together. Okay. Mm. Cut out Ludwig's face. Cut, 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 Yacht, 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 yacht. Uh-huh. Sandy looks good, dude. Looking like a snack in that jacket. Mm. What was Stan streaming today? I, I couldn't watch it. Usually I'm a Stan's lurker. His view count was popping, though. Was he doing something hype? What was his content? Anyone watch? You fucked it on the bottom right? I also cut out the G. God damn it. All right. Uh, cut it. This is closer. Then. This is so annoying that this happened. <laughs> then I need to go back. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. All right. Just overlay it 100% one to one. Then this. And then add that. And then layer by a copy. And then move it over here. And then zoom. Zoom. Wow. <laughs> kind of weird to see them in the background. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> more layers <laughs> yeah yeah you're right i do have a lot of layers and i want to apologize for it then i take stanzi's head and shoulders and i make it mucho big <laughs> this doesn't make any sense dude i've made the head too big You know what though? It kind of kind of works for me. Okay. This is perfect. And then Ludwig, obviously. Let's get that big old head of his into the stream. Copy. Yeah. Crank that baby up. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, it doesn't, it obviously makes no sense, dude. Oh, this looks so bad. It just, it doesn't look good is the real problem. Okay. And then I got to make my head bigger. What are you saying? AI generated thumbnail? And AI would do so much better than this. Well, this kind of works. When I cut out the neck, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell how off it is because it's kind of like the head is coming. It's protruding. All right. You can't tell. No, you guys can't tell. Don't pretend like you can tell because you can't tell. And then this one requires a little bit more. These are all the off-brand photos I just realized. Uh, and then I just got to make my head a little bigger. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then erase. Oh, yeah, dude. 
Okay, and then almost done. Almost done. This is a this is a banger thumbnail. Layer by copy. Get over here. Where the fuck is it? Oh. Layer by copy. Put it above. What the fucking shit? Alright, it's here. Layer by a copy. Get this over here. Oh, now we're that looks bad ish, but we're gonna add a negative minus. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Literally, what are the other layers? It's every, it's, you understand, it's every fucking layer from every thumbnail I've ever made. Do you understand? It's Jeopardy negatives are red. You're smoking crack if you think that's the case. <laughs> you are smoking crack. How the fuck could I possibly change this to red? Dude, I'd really like to get this uploaded as the thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just fill that with red. No, just don't even worry about contiguous. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Done. Literally done. Literally done. No, stop. Stop. I, I take no notes. Um, Sporkle Thumb, V1 Final Final, V2. <laughs> that was a good name. I'll never find it again. Uh, then I upload it to YouTube Thumbos. The worst part about doing a thumbnail stream, oh, dude, it looks just beautiful in person, is that the top fucking comments are always like, Lamau, <laughs> love the thumbnail, bro. <laughs> Like, on a normal video, nobody comments on thumbnail at all. And then, whenever I do a thumbnail stream, there's at least, like, fucking six people that are like, Whoa! This thumbnail definitely wasn't made live on stream. <laughs> it's like all... It's like, it's just fucking... Like, hey, I was here, bro. That's all the, the first fucking thumbnails. Or the first fucking comments on a thumbnail stream. So that's why I don't do them. Um, okay. Um, who is my dumbest friend? Bum, 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 save. Public. Upload. Yeah! Da -da -da -da. What else should we do? What else should we do? What else? This is already a really good list. Um... Except for this one. <laughs> this one. This one is not going well off the rip. Only one thumbnail stream. <laughs> per year. <laughs> Allotment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, oh, earlier streams. Let's talk about it. My dream, I wake up a cold winter's morning. I work out, then get off-brand work done for four to six hours. Then I go live like three or 4 p.m. This is my dream. But this is a dream, not a promise. Because I just told me I can, I don't know if I can do it, bro. This is my dream. This is like, this is like, this is my ideal world. 
If I was living my best life, I would wake up at a good consistent time. I would go walk to a nearby cafe, get breakfast. Imagine your feet. This is literally, this is, how I, this is my dream. It doesn't happen, but this is what I dream would happen. I go to a cafe, I get breakfast. Then I work out. Then I sit down, grind out what I gotta do for off brand. Usually yeah, respond um, to contractors or, or the producers or brands or whatever emails, or we're gonna work on our pitch decks. Okay, I do that, knock it out. Then immediately after a short break, hang out with Ari maybe, and then I go live. Three or 4 p.m. PSD. If I could do this consistently, I would be living my best life. Um, eat a full pumpkin in its entirety. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good one that's not oh yeah this is actually a big one go back over here no no no, no, no. wins and fails organize my fucking tabs organize your my fucking tabs get a fucking script ready that has the tabs ready to go so you don't have to search so long to find the one thing you already remember I'm a digital hoarder. I am. That's what you resolutions are for. We gotta find our. We gotta. Oh, here's a resolution. Give my wife a big hug because she made a delicious stew. Very hot. Great stew. Don't have it again. Yeah, don't squeeze. Damn. And this is harassment. You're gonna get twit longer. That's what you get for being on the camera. I'm gonna have twit longer you. You're on twit longer. Yeah, I'm not on it. You're gonna be on it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> why is this in like career? What do you mean career? Like the oh, it's a notepad. This is a notepad. This is my resolutions. Why can't you use like Google's? Stuff? Hey, you know what resolutions are on here? Do more Ari streams. People want to watch you play Slayer Spire. Oh, I don't think that's that's happening. Because <laughs> I'm not good. I just like. Man, it's not fun. about being good. You're Man, fun. You're fun to watch play it, and everyone okay, will you enjoy it. Your resolution be clean. <laughs> <laughs> At least your room, you know. No shot. No Wait, fucking shot. Wait, what's this shot. one? Uh, this one is about thumbnail streams where I don't th I forget to do a thumbnail and then I do it live on stream and everyone else will watch me make a thumbnail. You do that? <laughs> they said get clean and then, then Quack said he's using. Like I'm getting clean of drugs. Oh, yeah, like the Yetco. <laughs> Da, 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 da. What did it made you send me? Oh, no, it didn't. No. Get fulcrum on? Yeah, that's that's a new resolution. Bro, fulcrum's too big for me. Fulcrum skipped my level of... When I watched fulcrum, when I reacted to fulcrum, I had more subs for one day. He got 400k subs that day. The day I uploaded that video. Then he went to fucking millions, and now he fucking hangs out with Obama, dude. I'm I'm sure he is double penjaming with fucking Obama right now. The dude's he's a rocket ship. I wish him all the success. Uh, I actually really, really like and respect his authenticity. You know, when all the world's a stage, the truly authentic shine through, and that I believe is the key to his success. Um, he's hanging out with a Nazi kind of cringe. Oh, that sucks. He got milkshake ducked. <laughs> you guys know milkshake duck? The, the idea that everything on the internet ends up fucking actually having a secret dark <laughs> fucking problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's big into Andrew Tate. Really? I feel like I I um I missed how do I say this? <laughs> I haven't seen the parts of Andrew Tate that people like. <laughs> I don't get like how what what the good stuff he's doing that is getting people to like him. I I've only seen the parts that look really cringe. But like to anyone, I'm, I, I listen. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. This is not a bit. I'm not trying to like be like, I don't get it. <laughs> I just haven't seen. I haven't seen the parts where he says like, um, because I heard someone was explaining it to me, and they whatever they were saying like, the key thing he does is that he says a lot of like weird outlandish shit to get attention, and then he mixes in like very obvious. Stuff that everyone agrees with. <laughs> this is what I was. This is what I, he like. He, he he puts in some you know some stuff that everyone thinks is true and is like sounds smart, and then everyone calls him crazy, right? So if you're like a 14 year old kid and your mom calls Andrew Tate crazy, he's like everything he says is weird, and then you hear the 30 percent that's like normal, then you're like, oh, he's that's not crazy. <laughs> he said that like, you know. <laughs> People should love each other or whatever, <laughs> you know? And then, so you're like, oh, that, well, that makes sense. And so he, then everyone else calling him crazy must be crazy. Cause yeah. So like, that's the fucking, uh, that's like the playbook. But the problem is I've never heard the 30%. I just, I've, I've missed it. So I've only seen the weird stuff. I haven't even seen the one part of it. That's like interesting. Uh, Make your bed, work out. Make your bed, poggies, work out, poggies. Women are bitches, feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. Say some fucking weird shit, but then you mix in like, you know what? Like living a healthy lifestyle is good for you. Like actually, if you're feeling like you uh, waste a lot of your day, you should you should be more motivated, <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, that is true. <laughs> This guy's on to something. And then it's like, okay, he didn't it wasn't that hard to say like a few things that everyone knows is. Um uh, But it's so much that everyone Yeah. There's a lot of shit that's like pretty obvious that people can agree with. That doesn't require to do any work to say. Oh. Mm. Jordan Peterson's back. The thing about Jordan Peterson is I don't know shit about him, to be honest. Jordan Peterson to me looks so visually boring. <laughs> <laughs> that I can't listen. <laughs> I can't, I, you know, it's what, it's a scroll past kind of, I just can't, I can't visually focus on Jordan Peterson. Um, mm -hmm. Celeste. Now the thing about Celeste is that I am a huge trans. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making that joke with stands a lot lately. No, I don't want to play Celeste because of, uh, I don't really like, the, here's the honest reason. I'll tell you the honest reason that I don't want to play Celeste is that I think the graphics are off-putting to a new person in stream. I think if you're someone who tunes in and you see that, you're just like, eh, eh, and you go away. Now, maybe I'm wrong. It's possible that I'm wrong, but that's, that's what I think. I'm not dog whistling. <laughs> Uh, that's what I think. And I'm, I could definitely be wrong, bro, but that's what I think. And like in a way that hollow Knight is not like hollow Knight, I thought was a very cool art style. That was like intriguing. You know, you wanted to learn more about it. And I feel like Celeste looks too much like a flash game to me, but I'm, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll play. I'm not putting it on my list. I'll tell you that, but I might play it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> ah yes because that's the audience you want to grow what do you mean it's not necessarily about growing the audience it's more about like i don't want to just do it to please a cohort of people who have already played it a million times and just want to watch and go you know i want to make something that could be like interesting to somebody new um 
Bloons is literally a flash game. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay? Do you guys want to talk about the same thing all fucking year? There's so many topics to cover. It's 2023. Can we move the fuck? Everyone's got to stick stuck in one topic? Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> um... Man, this soup is hitting the spot. Oh, here's what we're going to do right now. There's, uh, well, actually, does anyone mind if I watch the CoffeeZilla video about Logan Paul? I know that probably you've seen it a gazillion times, but I never got to watch part two, and I wanted to watch it. So I think I will. For I mean, this video, I think, is his biggest video. It's blown the fuck up. Logan Paul has had to deal with it. Logan Paul is cosplaying as CoffeeZilla now. Uh. <laughs> yeah, here it is, bro. Oh, he put out a statement? Oh, yeah. That's not... That's not everybody. Uh, there's C Logan Paul cosplaying as CoffeeZilla. It's like, bro, just... <laughs> You're doing... This is like so much effort. Well, we just don't scam people. We're already rich. What did he say? No, he hasn't, he hasn't said a statement. Um, all right, let me see it. This is, the, this is part two. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. CryptoZoo.co. It's a really fun game that makes you money. I lost around $50,000 in CryptoZoo. I lost $40,000. $500,000 Australian. Do you, it's, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. There's nothing I could do with it. Wait, you can't even hatch? No. We had a an issue with um, <laughs> CryptoZoo where our, our, our lead developer uh, took the code it's fun to play the serious music over <laughs> you can't even hatch your nft crypto zoo token you can't hatch the egg that he made fled to switzerland actually fled to switzerland and like held it hostage for a million dollars he never literally never gave me anything at all ever and he promised me you know five percent tokens and a million dollars he never he never literally never gave me anything. wait a second Who's Eddie? I thought that all of this was Logan Paul. What's this random guy doing in Logan Paul's project? And who is he? Who is Eddie Ibanez? Who is Eddie Ibanez? To begin answering the question of who Eddie is, I decided to take a deep dive. Mm. I started by looking through all the news articles I could on Eddie, where I found out he graduated from MIT and from there became a data scientist and cybersecurity expert and used that technical background to win a Super Bowl for the Eagles. What? And there were videos on him too, which all painted him as brilliant <laughs> and extremely- Wait, accomplished. sorry, what? No. <laughs> this is the second video. Um... Accomplished. Yes, hi, my name's Eddie Ivan. He's not, he didn't, he didn't take credit for that, does he? <laughs> there is no way this guy had anything to do substantially with the Eagles Super Bowl victory. And as I'm a father of three, um, you got to imagine the coach and the teenager, players. <laughs> he successfully hacked AOL from his bedroom. He continued to pursue computer science. He scored a few touchdowns. Okay, MIT. Sick, sick. He was then recruited out to work for a government agency in cybersecurity, developing software that reverse engineers the location of known government and terrorist threats. You started with the federal government and you started off really tracking criminals with, with burner phones and all. <sighs> Honestly, after this whole search, I felt more confused than ever. If Eddie's such an amazing guy, why didn't he pay developers? And is he really the puppet master behind CryptoZoo? Or is it someone else? Honestly, I felt like at this point I needed a drink and I needed to ask for help. Poppy, how's it going? <sighs> Not good. <laughs> oh, what happened? Well, I'm confused about this Eddie Ibanez guy. 
He comes out of nowhere with this crypto zoo story, and everything about him I find seems great. So, what's the problem? Well, everything's not great. Everything about this guy just this seems production value too is crazy. perfect. He's an MIT grad. He works for the military. He even claims he won a Super Bowl. Why would that guy work for Logan Paul? I don't know, but I can find out. You said his name is Eddie Ibanez. I think he goes by Eduardo technically, but I mean it's no Bergsy. Just to be clear, like it's not, it's not as lifelike. Well, Bergsy's real, so it's not the same thing. But I get, I get what he's going for. You know what I'm saying? It's not quite. Wait, what are you doing? I'm just looking around. And done. Well, what'd you find? A few red flags, a couple of misdemeanors. Ooh, a few court cases. I'll yeah, send yeah him he's over. taking even coffee's though his job. He got sued by his landlord for not paying rent. Sued by his credit card company for not paying his bill. You can skip that stuff. I just need whatever's relevant to CryptoZoo. Well, that's basically <laughs> well, it. You did include it in the video. Other than, hold on. No, wait. I did find something. Look, look at this. What's this? It's from a paper in Philly. I barely picked it up. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. Wait, <laughs> what? Yeah, the whole Eddie Ibanez character. This guy Adam Robb investigated it. He says it's a lie. Oh, I gotta shit. find this guy. He, send me his info. I, I got some calls to make. Uh, coffee. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We met up with Adam Robb, the reporter who's been investigating Eddie Ibanez for a while now. And I wanted to know, what did Adam think of him when they first met? I wasn't quite sure what to make of him. Based on what I knew about him, he was a MIT grad who went on to work for the CIA and the Defense Department. And I didn't want to waste his time. <laughs> and it wasn't long after I sat down that I realized he was wasting my time. <laughs> Eddie has told me so many lies over the course of my two interviews with him. And the first lie he told me is probably the oldest lie that he's told so many people, which is that he's an orphan. I first realized Eddie might be lying to me when I went home the next day and Googled Eddie Ibanez's family. I found a video of Eddie and his wife uh, making a rice pudding on a Fox and Friends what? segment on Fox News. And Eddie's Why wife, Jackie, explained News? that she learned the recipe from Eddie's mother. So in that picture, you've got uh, Jackie Ibanez. You know her along with her husband, Eddie, and her two little girls. You know, love rice pudding. Why is this yes. a family recipe? Okay, so Eddie's mom made this rice pudding once. Wait, Eddie's mom? I thought Eddie was an orphan. Well, it turns out the only problem with that is that not only does his mom exist, she's alive and in his life. And it turns out it wasn't just Adam that heard this story either. He told it a lot. Did, did you ever meet his mother or his parents? I did meet his mother. Did he ever tell you he was an orphan? Yes. <laughs> How did he square that with you? <laughs> so that's why he told me he was an orphan and all this stuff. And then I, I meet his mom. He told me he was an orphan <laughs> and then I met his mother is quite the string of that's words. That's crazy. But as insane as these lies are, let's be real. It doesn't explain why CryptoZoo failed, but the next lies kind of do, because part of Eddie's story is also that he went to MIT where he was recruited to the CIA. And it's part of why he was so attractive as a lead developer, all the wild experiences that he had had. But it's just not true. I emailed the MIT Red Stars office and I asked if Eddie Ibanez attended the school and they confirmed in absolute terms that he never attended MIT. <laughs> That's right. The whole orphan to MIT origin story, it wasn't true. And yeah, this happened to Elon too, bro. Elon's got a long history about lying about degrees. There was a pretty good Twitter thread that went like line by line on everything he said. He said like he's had 14 different degrees over the years. <sighs> Eddie's whole backstory from here kind of falls apart as well. How could he have been recruited to a government agency out of MIT if he never went to MIT? If this is all seeming crazy to you, you might ask yourself, who would believe all this? And this is where Eddie shines. He kind of had a gift for getting people to believe in the lies he told, especially super rich and powerful people for some reason. Like take for instance, this story, him winning the Super Bowl for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a crazy story. He managed story. to convince the owner of the New York Yankees that it was true, Barry Clarber, who completely bought into it without question and told the same story later in a college seminar. Uh, let's jump right into the work that you did for the Philadelphia Eagles, which 
led to a led to a Super Bowl championship, <laughs> led to you getting a Super Bowl ring. Yep. Tell us exactly what your job was to do for them and how it worked out. No, sure thing. So first off, they they said like uh, we don't know where to put you, but uh, and then the sports science guy was the one guy. He's like, hey, I got some data. I'm, I'm interested. So uh, so we took in his data and then we found out that these players. Uh, what happens is it's like a player as they run around, uh, they get a certain fatigue level. So if you think if you ever played Street Fighter, the video game, there's like a red bar at the top, and every time you get hit, that red bar goes down until you die. <laughs> Bullshitting! This just bullshitting so hard. This is like a fucking, not even a master class because it's so bad, but it's like the fucking, the Olympics of just rambling. That's that's crazy. Also, he's talking to like a eighty fucking four year old owner, <laughs> and he's using a Street Fighter example. You ever played Street Fighter, right? You're you're <laughs> you know Wake Up DP. That's kind of like when. <laughs> <laughs> when the quarterback died. Okay, right. <laughs> so then we're trying to figure out kind of what it, that is for a player and on an injury level, right? There's injury part that gets, uh, that gets knocked down and that gets KO'd. This is insane. He convinced an owner of the Yankees that he won a Super Bowl by turning sports athletes into street fighter characters. And of course, none of it's true. The Philadelphia Eagles responded to a fact check saying he never worked for their player analysis team. Not only that, the Eagles also said that Eddie did try to do an in-person presentation in March of 2018, but that was already a month after the Eagles had already won the Super Bowl. And also, <laughs> they didn't hire him because of course not. <laughs> Meaning, there's no way this story is true. And yet, he's convinced people at the highest levels of sports that it is. And this is where we get back to CryptoZoo, of course, because it's how he got involved with that project. Remember Jeff Levin, Logan's manager, who we spoke to last time? Well, he also spoke to Adam Robb. And when he told him the reasons he liked Eddie, they sounded very familiar. And did, did he tell you, I guess, kind of like about like working with the NFL and that kind of stuff and the whole, yeah, like his yeah, time in the CIA and all that? He did. And it was interesting. It was like, this is wild, you know? Like, that's pretty cool. But he's, once again, he's humble and he's, he's not like, Never bragging or anything yeah. like that. No, he's wait, never wait, bragging. But, but he is bragging. He literally <laughs> made it all up. The CIA NFL stories aren't true. How could it's not bragging if it's not true. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then it's just lying, which is entirely different. You can be a humble liar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what he is. He's a down to earth humble liar. Could that not be bragging? But that's the impression Eddie gave off. But that's not all because Eddie didn't just use made up stories to get in with the CryptoZoo team. He also used his other connections, his real millionaire and billionaire friends that he's managed to gain with all these fake stories. And some of them vouched for him. People like Chris Birch and Todd Morley. And what was the thing that kind of like sold you on Eddie? Was it the fact that like Chris and Todd and people like that kind of like have backed him in the past and like- I just think he's a down to earth, humble guy okay who's been who's been super successful mm -hmm. they're trying to do with an agenda and he's just kind of like hey look i'm super smart in what i know and i have amazing relationships <laughs> through business that i've done it's incredible i mean how does this guy keep getting away with it honestly it's baffling but i've got to say up till now everyone's been fooled sort of fair and square on the same grounds but i found out crypto zoo did have an advantage that could have saved them all this trouble the whole time. So a month before the launch of CryptoZoo, I got on the phone with Jeff Levin, Logan Paul's manager. And after he spoke fondly of Eddie and his work, I confronted him about some of Eddie's lies, including how he didn't work for the NFL. Jeff told me he doesn't know much about the NFL, but he knows about the business world. And Chris Birch and Todd Morley vouched for Eddie. And so Jeff and Logan were going to continue working with him. Have, have you ever verified that anything Eddie said about himself is true? We verified that it's true. Yeah. Yeah. We would talk we definitely talk to people. Okay. And, and his friends and you know, and people that talk to his friends. He said he has relationships with, which we've confirmed them for sure. Okay. Because I had Bro, can I tell you guys a story? Have I told this story? I don't know if I have because I don't tell NVIDIA stories, but I can tell it now. It's been far enough. I can tell a story. It was an NVIDIA story. I was hiring a guy. See this guy? It's a very it's a short story. I was hiring a guy. I had to hire for a job. 
and there was two candidates. And there was, uh, okay, they may have to tell the story. And there was one candidate that really charmed the hell out of me in the interview. He like he had like this these like this intense stare and these really bright eyes and he was like good eye contact, good handshake, telling all these you know he had all these great examples. He had great references. I'm not gonna list his company. I don't want to find out who this is, but he had like really good companies, you know the 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 best of the best in gaming, the ones you'll know. And he had this whole list. And his resume was sick, and I was like, "This guy's this guy's a rock star for this role. Like this guy, this guy could have my job. I mean, this guy's crushing it." So I'm 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm like blown away. And the other candidate is is good, but you know, it's not like it's not like triple A. It's not like the, like it's not like the, the sickest resume. Sick. They're just a nice person, and they, they answer the questions well. So we're leaning towards the first candidate, and I I'm 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 not gonna lie and pretend like I noticed anything. I was sold. I was like. Because you have to give a rating when you're about to hire somebody. Everyone on the interview panel has to give a rating of one to five stars. This is how NVIDIA does it. There's different other Twitch, but so I give it five star. I was like, this person's a five star. This person's perfect for the role. They have all the experience, you know, pending uh, whatever. But um, and thankfully, um, there's other people at NVIDIA who I think are better interviewers than me who have been doing it for a long. People have been there 20 years, and they were one of them was on the panel. And he had he had a three star. He was like, eh, I don't know, something doesn't sit right or whatever. And so I, because I was, uh, I was uh, one of the lead on that. So I I take it upon myself to start calling references, <laughs> uh, but not just his references, but like people that I know that worked at those companies. So I go and I call. This was not blur. This is, is that Nvidia? This is a this is a this is a this is a higher level job. Uh, so this would have been like a six figure job, uh, with, with a lot of responsibility. And it was like somebody was, we wanted for a long time and like, it was supposed to be a key job. And, uh, uh, and so I call and I call this company and I call this woman and she, when I say this guy's name, literally starts crying, <laughs> literally says he is the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> He's like the absolute worst to work with. He's a complete psychopath. Now, there's no like, uh, uh, you know, she didn't say there was like nothing, nothing illegal, nothing, nothing illegal. Just like a total psychopath, like anger issues, maybe just like completely terrible to work with. Uh, um, caused so much drama at the company, you know, just awful, 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 awful. Uh, I feel like you yeah, I think I might have said it was at Twitch. I think I changed it. This is, this is a video story. Anyway. So, but like, again, I'm going into this call thinking this guy's a rock star and we're going to get a pretty clear sign off. And instantly she's like, no. <laughs> and what's more funny is she's like, listen, I, I, I don't want to like, um, you know, overstep my bounds or anything, but I'm like begging you, please don't make the mistake of hiring this guy. <laughs> and I've called, I've done these calls a good amount. Like I've hired a good amount of people and I've done a number and like, I've never, ever had a call like this. Never. <laughs> this wasn't even his references. This was this was a different reference. This this, Cause I wanted to get an honest reference. So I called somebody who worked at the company near him. Um, and so I don't know what he did, but that reaction was hugely off putting. So we ended up not hiring him. Thank God. But the point is I was this close. Cause like, it was kind of my call at the end of the day. And like, I was this close. I was like, cause I thought that guy was great. We were so close to working with that guy. And once he's in, it's so hard to get him out. What does actual reference say? I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. And I might have just called her first, and that was all I needed. I think I might have called one more one other person. But uh yeah, because I, I called two people for sure. And both of them had bad things to say. I called two people, but hers was so extreme that I remember. Um uh, was he just insanely charming? Yeah, he's just really charming. He's just great. He was just really good in the interview. Like he, he did all the things right, you know, in the interview you want to have like great eye contact, good handshake. Um, not massive pauses, you know, uh, keep your answers short and to the point. He was just good at interviewing. He was good at interviewing. I don't know. He like, he did everything right. And, and then because his resume was so good, by the way, I mean, <laughs> my understanding from asking around more was that like his resume was, it wasn't fake, but it was exaggerated to the point where like a lot of the things he said he did or led were things he worked on and wasn't very popular on. And then also like he had 
his most recent job he had put from like 2017 to blank, which implies that it's still ongoing, but he had been let go. <laughs> so it was actually a lie. It was actually, he had been fired, but he had said like it was, is you know, so that. Mm. Do you think a truck will have that lady's reaction if anyone ever asked about me? Yeah, uh, plenty of YouTubers have called and asked me if Quack's a good editor to pick up, and I, I do the same thing. <laughs> I do it bar for bar. I start crying. I go, he is, he's the worst. He's the worst editor of all time. <laughs> I don't even laugh, dude. I do it dead serious. <laughs> I say, please, I have to beg you. I beg you. Even for free, he's not worth it. He asked for money. <laughs> no, you don't get it. He has to be paid for his work. It's the worst. We're YouTubers. We shouldn't have to pay people. <clears throat> yeah. No, I told Hassan that he asked for money and Hassan wanted to fight him, dude. <laughs> Hassan was asking for an editor and I was like, dude, Quack, Quack will ask literally for pay. And then Hassan was out after that for sure. Uh, okay. Trouble with some of that, like, with the NFL, like, saying that, like, no, we've never worked with him, and that kind of thing. But, but you've had... The NFL? The NFL saying that? Yeah. Like, who at the NFL? The, the comms teams for the Eagles and the, uh, Dolphins. And then the, um, people specifically that he named that he said he worked with. Got it. Um, I don't know necessarily the football stuff. Okay. And, you know, I don't have relationships in the football world. Sure. But in the business world, you know, we've definitely, you know, talked to multiple people. Like Tom and Chris, and they backed him. Correct. Wait a second. This means at minimum, Jeff knew about Eddie's background beforehand, or part of it, and still decided to go with him. This is just unbelievable, yeah, willful stupidity. And since Jeff is Logan's manager, I assume him and the team should have known about this as well. But still, they went forward with it, even though they knew this stuff before launch. Now, I started to reach out for comments about this because obviously this is a huge deal. But when I this Eddie situation, just rich assholes buying into their own lie of meritocracy. If someone's rich, you just assume, of course, they work for the NFL and CIA wouldn't be rich. Uh, yeah, there's some of that. I, what I wonder is, how did this guy get rich in the first place? Did they explain that, or is he come from a rich family, or what? Like, what what was his? How did he scam his way into money, and then the whole backstory he made up? What's the, uh, what was his? I did, I got a call from somebody new, someone with a different perspective that I hadn't heard from before. Jake, the crypto. Or is he even rich? Maybe he's, he's not He's been rich. involved with some of Logan's projects in the past, like Pokemon, for example. He was called the collectibles guru a few years ago. Nowadays, he goes by Crypto King, and he's an advisor for the CryptoZoo project. So let's add him to the conspiracy board. Bro, some people are just fucking, they're the buzzword Andes, dude. Whatever's making money, they just flop in. This guy went from collectibles guru to crypto king. He's going to be the fucking AI guy <laughs> in 2023, dude. He's going to be, <laughs> I'm an AI guru, dude. I talk about the, the <laughs> he's the AI emperor. He's the computer whisperer. But the question is, what did he have to say? I took a call with him and he mostly wanted to talk off the record. But when I pressed him, he was willing to at least put one thing on the record for me. Right. One more thing about Eddie before we get off of him. We actually have got the biggest reason it failed, in my opinion. Okay. Because I don't want it to ever be thought that Logan's the reason it failed. He's not. Logan wasn't smart enough for what he tried to build. And then when it was built and was failing, didn't have the ability to correct it and to save face and reputation. It was more convenient to pull out than to be associated with a failing project that the dev rocked. So um, I could put the, that one sentence on the record. Well, that is certainly emphatic. <laughs> Crypto King says it's all Eddie's fault. And this is a nice, neat theory for us. You can't really trust that only because, I mean, that could end up being the way things are, but because, because Eddie is a publicly now outed liar and scammer and Logan Paul is still a very rich, successful YouTuber with all the clout and connections and fame. The guy's going to suck up and say it was 0% Logan's fault. He's going to jump on the grenade for Logan. Obviously he's not going to say, he's going to say a bad word about Logan. Double audio. What do you mean? Oh, I, I gained my mic a little bit. Sorry. Relax. Mm -mm. All right. We'll move back here. 
you know, Eddie ruined everything because, yeah, Eddie is a liar. So it does seem to explain how these developers test, got test, test. screwed. But this theory doesn't fit all the facts because Eddie was kicked off the team months ago and still the game is not working despite Logan good, claiming they were cool, going to go back and fix cool, cool, all cool, the cool, problems. Again, retroactively working to make the, make these projects right. And this, this takes time, bro. It just it takes time. Development takes time. Working backwards to fix things, which isn't ideal, but also this project will speak for itself. And now, you know, we're working backwards to try to, to try to fix it. This just hasn't happened. Even a <laughs> year from launch, yeah, the game long just time. doesn't exist. What's worse is the newest dev team who came on after Eddie just quit. And one of the reasons was they hadn't been paid for over a month. I know this because Logan's team is leakier than the Titanic and someone told me that, but we also have blockchain evidence. He this is Jeff it? paying Block Ops, the company they hired out on July 19th. They were supposed to redo all this work. It's confirmed by their leader, Skip, talking about a first monthly payment on that day. But after that, there's nothing until they quit on September 26th Yikes. in a post called Our Departure from CryptoZoo. Now, I do have to say, it does look like they were eventually paid, but only- Can I say something that I, I am no developer. I'm not going to pull a Elon Musk or a Logan Paul here and pretend that I'm going <laughs> to- But uh, how fucking hard is it to make <laughs> a game where two JPEGs produce a third JPEG? How- that- how, I feel like automated could make this in a fucking afternoon. How how difficult is it to make you you put in two fucking JPEGs and you get a third one? There, there's not there's not there's no game here. There's no there's no gameplay. They're not making Pokemon. They're making a game where you you have a you have one NFT and it makes a third NFT. Only a day after they quit. And this is just the same problem as before, slightly different. <laughs> Nobody can pay these devs on time and investors blockchain, baby. end up getting All right, you're right, baby. It's blockchain. And so I can't buy into the idea that Eddie's at fault for everything because when Eddie was gone, they had a lot of the same problems. Now, right. it was only at the point that this dev team quit, Block Ops, that things really took a turn. Because if the Titanic was leaking before, now it was sinking. And everyone basically gave up hope. You know, from every direction, I started getting messages from all the investors who felt betrayed, who up to this point were holding on to hope. Oh, now they felt defeated. They felt tricked by the crypto zoo team who had fed them promise after promise. And they were sick of it. He was never in the chat or anything, never apologized or told us anything. Things didn't work out. Things didn't work out. We all get that, but to continue to be clear if i had bought like fifty thousand dollars of fucking egg tokens and things didn't work out i wouldn't be like eh, things didn't work out we all get that i would be fucking furious if i put five hundred thousand dollars australian into fucking uh, egg jpegs and they didn't even fucking finish the game I would, I would not, even an apology would not be enough. I would want my fucking money back. You have to finish the fucking game you started. Continuously lie, lead people on, hype people up to put more money in. All, all the while in the background, things are going down, things are hitting the fan, and you left us holding the bag. I know it was my decision, uh, and I did my research, uh, but I, I believe- Like again, the it seems like there's two separate issues here because if the, the crypto zoo game had been fraught with so many scammers um, in, in the development and so much development issues and they couldn't get it to figure it out, they couldn't make the game work, and so it ended up being a flop, and Logan lost money on it, that's an entirely different story. Like if he put up a bunch of money and lost money and it was like, you know what, it didn't work. Then it's like, okay, he made a bad decision and went with some bad people. But because he, they profited. Like, they, they took all the egg money and they made money. <laughs> and so it's not, that's what, it feels really scummy. It feels really, really scummy that these guys lost all their money. All the fucking fans lost the money. And, uh, all, you know, the people that did all the fucking up made the money. I believe nobody has to lose money uh, in this way. And that's when a whistleblower stepped forward and decided enough was enough. They decided to leak me messages, team messages from the CryptoZoo team 
from all the way back in the beginning when they thought of this idea all the way up to launch. And seeing that, it changed everything. Oh. Because all of a sudden, I got a lot of new information. Remember how Jake, the Crypto King, said Eddie was the only problem? Well, a year ago, he was saying something very different. On the day of launch, he said this to the group. Logan, you stole 40 million in tokens Jesus. from me. You are a scam artist. You are a liar and you betrayed <laughs> your own community. You aren't that guy. Logan replies, oh, Jake, trust me, bro. I am that guy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Trust me, bro. I am that guy. He should have attached an image of him in the fucking uh, alien hat. <laughs> Flip now. Bum, 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 bum. Part three. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Uh, personally, the whole team, a million plus. We had a issue with um, CryptoZoo where our, our, our lead developer uh, took the code that he made, fled to Switzerland, actually fled to Switzerland and like held it hostage for a million dollars. He never, literally never gave me anything at all ever any policy, you know five percent tokens and a million dollars never you never literally never paid me this reporter says eddie's entire story is fake liam got this reason it felt in my opinion Doug, i'm not the bad guy here yeah yeah there's some actual out there yeah and i'm it's not me like i'm here to build <laughs> Welcome to part three. So far, we've discovered fake orphans, millions of dollars build. stolen, and a build. cast of sleazy characters. But now, it's time to put it all Let's together. Let's build together, my brother. What is the truth? And who's to blame? Very sexy. We're gonna start by going through leaked text messages of the CryptoZoo team to understand all of their motivation. Then we'll go to blockchain evidence and show who sold what. And finally, we'll confront some of the people responsible. But before we can do any of that, we have to start in March of 2021, six months before the token even launched. Our four suspects, Logan, Crypto King, Eddie, and Jeff, are in a group chat discussing okay. CryptoZoo, which <laughs> Dream starts blunt rotation, as dude. a copy of something <laughs> else. Quote, I like imitating Crypto Kitties, Jake the Crypto King says. Logan replies, I agree. And initially, it wasn't called CryptoZoo at all. It was called Crypto Pets, <laughs> and they were gonna sell a pets token and pretty early on it became clear this was all about money how they were going to sell this thing to investors in fact crypto king said he thought it was worth at least bro just to be clear there's has anyone at all at all the whole point of a crypto game is the money there's nobody making a crypto game that's like yeah i'm doing it for the love of tokenization <laughs> if you wanted to make a game for the love you would just make a game if you wanted it to be fun to the players, you add the crypto because you want to make fucking racks off it. You want to fucking scam people. There's no other reason, dude. $20 million in only six months saying the range is insane. 20 to $210 million. It's beautiful wherever we land. Eddie jumped in at this point and talked about how he could sell the project as an investor. Go back. It's just insane how many, how many of these there were in 2021. 2021 was just a year chock full of average people getting their money taken <laughs> in scams like these. Like a bunch of fucking bad people made out like bandits over and over and over and over again throughout all of 2021 and part of 2022. Uh, which is just crazy. It was such a weird time. Cri yeah, crypto Land. was such a fucking Eddie jumped tulip in at mania, this point dude. And talked about how he could sell the project as an investment to a friend, Matt Higgins, saying, quote, he has to spend that $350 million somewhere. Why not us? And Logan says, I love that idea. Crypto King, I'm in. 
And of course you have Jeff saying, let's go. So you can see right there, they wanted to sell let's this go. game before it had even launched. Now later, Eddie amends the list of investors and says, quote, investors will be Gary V, Todd Morley, James Altucher, Ryan Cavanaugh, and others confirmed on my end. Supposedly they had a hundred million dollars of investment interest. Now, I actually went to some of these investors and asked if this was true. And the one person who responded denied it, Ryan Kavanaugh. Quote, nope, not even a little bit. So this looks like it could be yet another lie from Eddie Ibanez. But either way, it looks like there was more issues yeah, than just lying. finding investors <laughs> because the team wanted to pre-sell tokens. And not everyone was sure it would be legal. Jake the Crypto King mentions that, quote, if we have a pre-sell, it opens us up to SEC issues. And Jeff agrees and says, don't want to do anything that brings the SEC eyeballs. <laughs> now, not everyone wanted to be so cautious, though. Logan argues everyone does pre-sale with coins. And he agrees. <laughs> he says, you absolutely can do it. I have the SEC down, private and pre-sale. And honestly, it was quite the dilemma for this team who wanted money. You know, do a pre-sale, make millions. But, you know, you have these potential legal issues. Don't do it. You make less money. So Crypto King comes up with a middle solution. He says, if we can't sell, no pre-sale. We can still trade them in the liquidity pool. And this is the start of a new disaster, which takes a bit of explaining. Now, just so we're clear, a presale is where you sell investors coins, usually at a discount, before you've launched. And then when you launch, you give them those coins. Now, like I said, the team didn't want to do that. So what they did instead was they- And those investors on launch day always dump them. They dump them all day of launch when excitement is at its peak and everyone's buying in. So as retail floods in to buy the coin, Everyone that got the pre-sale sells to the retail. So they just like take these free infinite coins they sent themselves and they dump them on the retail right when the hype is highest, when people are making their dumbest decisions. And then the coin dies very soon after and they realize, wait, what the fuck happened? <laughs> wait, we're holding this coin. You're not. You Somehow you got out. And that's like, that's like the fucking thing that happened over and 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 over again. Bought the tokens on the open market right after. It happens in an IPO too, but generally, uh, if it's an IPO of a, a big enough public company, I mean, the company still produces things and has revenue and <laughs> has assets and employees. And, and so what, what happens in IPOs for like big companies is that investment banks will sell some shares to insiders um, or, you know, get pieces out uh, at a discounted price. So the stock will usually pop on day one and then it'll go down, but it doesn't go to zero, generally. Uh, this did happen, I mean, it happened a lot with SPACs, which was like these f fast rushed IPOs to market, like FaZe Clan. A lot of these companies that weren't even close to being ready to be public companies, they were getting rushed out and they were getting dumped on the public and then people were popping. But in general, it's usually a pretty small gap. Like there's often times that they've been wrong. Like, um, I'm trying to think of companies where this happened. Um, I know there's a couple pretty famous IPOs where like they sold to insiders, insiders then dumped it on IPO day and then they were wrong. The company went like a rocket ship and they lost a lot of money. They looked like a lot of potential because they were trying to, Facebook maybe. After a launch, but they tried to get clever with it because they didn't actually announce that they were launching this coin at all. They stealth launched it on June 11th and didn't announce this token through Logan until August 18th meaning they had all that time to silently buy up as much of the supply at a steep discount as they wanted. And the idea here was that doing this, the team could get these tokens extremely cheaply, which is kind of like a presale, but you know, without all the SEC troubles. Right. And Crypto King makes this clear on June 7th when he says, quote, launch of the liquidity pool is where huge money will be made because you get in cheaper. And then says, we, the team, begin buying out the liquidity pool. Once the team has exhausted funds for the liquidity pool buying, we send the contract address to friends, family, investors who want to be able to get in. So obviously the plan is we buy first, then we give it to our close friends and family, and then maybe the public eventually, right? <laughs> and even the day before, Crypto King reminds everyone, quote, Zoo Day is tomorrow. I highly recommend everyone get a few hundred to a few thousand dollars in Zoo when it goes live. It will likely tend to a thousand X. So that was their plan. Rather than doing a pre-sale, they were gonna do this stealth launch. And it's funny, cause this is all so shit and so stupid that in a normal just world, they would instantly lose money. <laughs> That's what I think, you know what pisses me off the most is that like this made them money. It's like such a stupid, harebrained, ridiculous, dumb scheme that with no business, like the, they're making a product that does nothing. They should lose money. 
hopefully get tokens cheaply the same way, but without all the legal troubles. Or at least that was the plan. Because on stealth launch day, this is where things first started to go wrong for the team. At first, everything seemed to go normal. The team sat in a circle and literally bought it out as planned. But the next day, Crypto King says something odd. Quote, a bot is playing with our token. Kind of cool to watch them work. But he doesn't mention who this bot is. And he also says the asshole finished selling, but doesn't mention who that is. Now, Jeff, Logan's manager, replies upset. He says, how do we prevent someone doing what they just did again? We went from an $130 million to $26 million market cap in two hours. It's not cool to watch. Logan <laughs> jumps in. Yeah, wait, how did that happen? And he also says, what asshole? How did anyone get this token except for us and none of us sold? And I think actually this is incredibly suspicious because the implication of what Logan's saying is, hey, we tried to scheme this really well. We tried to all buy this without letting anyone know. How did this, how did anyone else figure out we were buying it, right? And this is where a fight ensues that's gonna become really interesting. Crypto King deflects the question by saying, my buyer pushed it back up to $40 million. And Logan says, no, bro, F your buyer. Explain to me what just happened and how there were 30 token holders. And Jake tries to explain that this was just traders and bots happening to find the token. But Logan says, only five of us knew about it. Jake says, well, many people chase volume and new tokens. And, and to some extent, he's kind of right. But Logan replies, cap. He doesn't believe it. Quote, I can't be the only one who thinks that's too incredibly convenient. Like someone was tipped off. And, and look, no one's more critical back. of Logan than. So even worse, Mark Lillian, how's a person imagining those amazing things? Even though they're not going to say, God, yeah, exactly. Yeah, multiplied their money and then dipped at the peak. Yeah, someone did actually just yoink. Like someone was tipped off. And, and look, no one's more critical of Logan than me. But as I'm reading these texts, I was kind of like agreeing. Like, yeah, it does seem too nonchalant when somebody's ruining your secret plot. You know what I mean? because Crypto King was acting very strange. He says, we created $40 million out of thin air. This is a success. Logan replies, this nonchalance worries me. F 40 million, it was at 120 million, <laughs> which again, it's all about the money with these guys. <laughs> but truth be told, I did agree that Crypto King's attitude seemed strange in these texts. I mean, he's not wrong that bots are a thing. Traders are a thing. But it sounded like he didn't want anyone to look into it. So. Naturally, I looked into it. Look into it. And what I found surprised me because there were bots, but there's also unusual human activity during this time. Mm. So I tracked the five biggest buyers of this zoo coin. And lo and behold, this is what I found. Logan was one of the biggest buyers, which is what you'd expect, but he wasn't the biggest. In fact, two of the biggest wallets seem to be associated with Crypto King himself. <laughs> and here's where I pause. I said, wait a second. Why did this guy buy more zoo tokens than Logan when this is mostly Logan's project? I thought Crypto King was a small part of this team. And so to get more info on this, I actually got access to an internal meeting note from the day of June 11, which they called Zoo Day. And in it, we find actually some interesting information. We see that five founders bought in. They apparently were quote, trading in circles until each person maxed out. But on the list of buyers and how much they spent are only four people. When we know five people bought, we have Danny, Logan's yeah. assistant for 20K, Logan Paul for 100K, Jeff at 100K, and okay. Eddie at 100K, but Crypto King is nowhere Where's to Crypto King? And yet on the blockchain, I have him putting in $200,000 worth. And this number, by the way, seemingly is confirmed in a conversation I had with Crypto King, where he said, my 200K investment. Mm. And the reason this is important is because it does imply that something shady was going on the day of the stealth launch because Crypto King had a relatively small role in this whole project. He was the advisor, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Like you can see from the internal meeting notes, they have a breakdown of who's getting what in terms of founder tokens. And like Logan Paul's getting 51%, Eddie's getting 30%, Jeff's getting 10%. Jake's only getting 5% of tokens, but he has the most of these like stealth launch tokens, which makes no sense. And it got me thinking that I'm very maybe interested. what I wanna... explains this suspicious behavior around like, oh, don't worry about who was buying at the time of the launch. <laughs> maybe that's explained because perhaps no one knew that he was buying up large parts of the token supply. Maybe he was buying it to sell later. Interesting. Now, of course, that's speculation. So that's he why I confronted the Crypto King on all of this. 
But before we get to that call, let's address the elephant in you the room. You invite a scammer Logan. in and he tries to scam you <laughs> on your scam? Oh, no. <laughs> Bro, this bot keeps buying. Logan didn't accuse Crypto King of being a scam. It was the other way around. Crypto King told Logan Paul he was a scammer. And the question is, why? Well, to answer that, we have to go from June, the stealth launch date, to September 1st, the official launch date of CryptoZoo. September 1st, CryptoZoo.co. Now, the day of the launch was a bit strange because you might think, well, they already have a token, right? But the first thing they did was actually create a new zoo token with a different code, but the same name. And they actually airdropped all the holders of the first zoo token with an identical amount of those coins on the second zoo token. So you might be wondering, why did they do that? Well, maybe it's to change the smart contract, but maybe it's because of what they did do. They blacklisted some of the holders. In other words, they didn't airdrop to everyone, including Jake, the crypto king. They excluded <laughs> his wallets so it couldn't get these zoo coins. Jake oh, texted the group about this the next day saying, quote, the zoo team made a major error this weekend. They chose not to communicate, mint a new token and airdrop it to whatever wallets they did. <laughs> it's funny. He's not. <laughs> He's not mentioning that it's his. He's like, dude, <laughs> the community is in an uproar about this. <laughs> the community is so mad, dude. There's just people out there whose wallets are not getting transferred to the new token. I've heard about this crazy situation. <laughs> I personally don't have anything because I didn't, obviously I didn't break our rule and buy more than 5%, but that's crazy. A scam within a scam within a scam within a scam. Determined fit. This decision came from Eddie and Logan and I had no part in it. 11,250 wallets before the airdrop, under 11,000 after. They chose to blacklist and ban over 200 wallets. Which actually makes perfect sense, right? Because they probably just pick the 11,000 wallets they knew the people of the friends and family and then just converted it over. So they cut out everyone that, <laughs> that all the bots and scammers are the first one. Now who those wallets are, I have no idea, but he continues quote, as a founder, like Logan, Jeff, Eddie, and Danny, I had purchased a large quantity of tokens. Five plus of my wallets had been blacklisted from the original team's buys. Now, I don't know why That's he had five, well, five the plus wallets there, but okay, okay. He says 80 plus billion zoo tokens were confiscated from me to date without any communication. So, wow. That's why Crypto King accused Logan of stealing from him or scamming. It's because he was frozen out of a lot of his wallets. And then we get to the text you guys all know. He says, Logan, you stole $40 million. You're a scammer. You're a con artist, all that stuff. You betrayed your community. The reality is you aren't that guy. Mm. And Logan responds. Oh, Jake, trust me, bro. I am that guy. Cue in the arms of an angel. And, and look, I mean, what do we make of this? Well, I, I, I don't know. I can't root for either of these guys because it sounds like Logan stabbed him in the back, but it sounds like Crypto King may have stabbed him in the back in the first place, right? Uh, because it does appear like he bought tokens that maybe everyone didn't know about. So I'm really not a fan of anyone in this situation. Yeah. And by the way, this whole thing was structured so misleadingly from the beginning. I have to talk to you a bit about it because you might think that these tokens were the only tokens they had, but it's not even true. In the distribution section of Zoo's white paper, they say there's two trillion tokens and a two quarter of that tokens. are allocated to development, marketing, and founders. Those aren't even the tokens we're talking about right now because they claim that those tokens were locked up for six months and then afterwards, 10% was unlocked every month. And if that's true, there would be no reason for these funds to be blacklisted, right? Why would you blacklist something that would be locked up? And the answer is because, well, the founders had more than one set of tokens. Not only did they supposedly have these founder tokens that were locked up and couldn't be sold, these <laughs> stealth launch tokens were different from- Bro, this happened all the time too, is where they would say, um, no, we can't rug. This, this project is the one crypto token that can't rug because our founders, it's built in, they can't sell for, but then they always would. They always would. Every single time they would, they would, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's not built into the contract or what, but every single time they would be like, no, this one is different because, uh, <laughs> 
because it's literally where founders are locked in. We're, we're, we don't get any special privileges and we can't even sell for it. And they would always sell. That it's like a whole different thing. And the tokens that they bought, that all of these guys bought, they could sell at basically any time because they weren't locked up, which is a massive problem. And this fact was explicitly laid out in their meeting notes with only one rule. They say, quote, no selling until $200 million market cap and don't impact the market more than 3% and not impact the market more than 10% in a day. And by the way, th like this is basically conspiracy to manipulate a market, you know, yeah. they literally <laughs> have an insider rules for how to sell, but we're gonna not even, we're gonna look past that, right? Because these rules eventually kind of changed. A text from Logan's manager, Jeff Levin, came to the group chat zoo founders saying guys new and absolute rules no one is to sell or transfer any zoo logan's gonna make the call when we can make moves and logan replies your tokens do not leave your wallet this is a game now that all sounds well and good don't sell your tokens don't sell your tokens but the reality was i mean they're just kind of trusting each other because these tokens that they're talking about they're unlocked they're not locked up and they could not only that not only are they trusting each other but the tokens are unlocked and have a very limited window of value before everybody realizes the jig is up. <laughs> so they've put in, you know, 100K that's now worth millions. And every day you wait, it's going to be worth less and less. <laughs> and so they all have to trust each other to not fucking panic and sell it all and get the fucking massive profits off the fucking backs of retail. And they're all four scammers as well. You could sell it at any time. And I guess the question on my mind is, is that why Crypto King's tokens were blacklisted? Because they thought he would sell? Or maybe it's just the fact they found out he bought and they didn't know about all those tokens. It's honestly hard to say without knowing more evidence. And this is where we're going to jump into the blockchain. Now, I've tracked the wallets of the entire team and identified the largest seller of Zoo in the team. And it wasn't Jeff. It wasn't Danny. It wasn't even Logan. It was Crypto King. Crypto King <laughs> sold, by my calculations, millions of dollars. And I know what you're thinking. How's, how's that possible, right? I thought his tokens were blacklisted the day of the official launch. How could he sell that much? Well, the answer is that not all of his tokens were blacklisted. He had even more tokens behind the scenes. <laughs> and what's worse, the CryptoZoo team actually gave him back a lot of his blacklisted tokens, which I guess you can see as a good thing or a bad thing because he then turned around and sold those tokens, right? <laughs> and from my blockchain analysis across his blacklisted tokens he got back and the tokens that he had squirreled away the whole time, he ended up making $6 million. Jesus! He did this by sending out tokens from these larger wallets to dozens of smaller wallets, selling it, and then sending the money to final cash out wallets. So I used those final wallets to calculate the amount he made. Now, I know, look, it's a lot to accuse someone of selling $6 million in a project that doesn't even work. It's a giant scam. So I wanted to give him a chance to defend himself. So I got on a call with Crypto King, and here's what he said when I finally revealed that I knew he had sold. I'm gonna change this whole story. Yeah, I'll go on the record for you, and yes, I'm gonna show you the text message that said, we can sell at, at these ascending market caps, and literally, I'm gonna... 100 percent it sounds like your biggest issue with me is that i sold and if that's your biggest issue with me that's the truth wow that is a big admission selling tokens for a project that you're an advisor on when the yeah. project has never been delivered although yeah. crypto king insists that it wasn't six million dollars and he wasn't trying to rug a project in fact you know really, that is he a project. might be <laughs> the one who got screwed over in all of this like i did sell i didn't sell six million dollars worth that's going to be other wallets, but that's probably not going to be able to be me being able to be proven, except for them saying, can you sign BNB to all these different wallets for me? Which that I'll be able to show you. That I uh, people do this all the time when they lie is when they, when you get caught, they admit it, but they like, they do half. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is a very common lie tactic where everyone's like, okay, yeah, I did do it, but, but it wasn't, it wasn't. <laughs> they, they try to like cut it down. They soften it. It's like, it's so, and also saying can't be proven is, <sighs> I was giving BNB to the whole team. I'll also be able to show you that I was a 5% um, holder of the zoo tokens that I was promised to be given over the three month period was never given. Um, I can also show you that I was frozen out and was never given the 15 billion tokens back that I paid for in cash. 
Okay. I'll show you all of those things on the record, and then you can also say that I did sell, which is also true. Yep. As long as it's accompanied with, he was a founder that was supposed to be given five percent of the project and was never given a token or paid. Worked for almost a year on the project. As long as that goes in with it. What is it? What are they working on? <laughs> If this, this guy's not a developer, so what, what did he advise on for a year? Because nothing was made, nothing was done, nothing happened. There's no project, there's just pictures of eggs. They just sold pictures of eggs on the blockchain. What did he advise on? The story so people understand that it's not like I was trying to run a project. It's like I put $250,000 into a project. You so made six million. Five, and the founder never did anything he said he was going to do and then hired a bunch of devs that didn't do what they were going to do. And every time I gave advice, the advice was I was told to f*** off. So it can be that story or it can be... He's and also based on the text messages, everyone involved knew this was a scam from the beginning. Based on the text messages they showed, like every one of the four people in this was well aware the only point... Nobody cared about the passion of this game. Everyone knew from the beginning the goal was to get the market cap up really high then pull out your token. Sold all this amount and he got in early. Well, yeah, that's like 1% of it though. Incredible. He sounds like he views himself as the victim, or at least like he got screwed too, which just has to win the gold medal for me for mental gymnastics. Because I mean, he literally had put $200,000 into this and he says he made millions of dollars. Even if you take him <laughs> at his word that he didn't make the full six million. Yeah, it's so fucking crazy. You just took millions of dollars of Logan Paul's fans money for nothing. You gave them nothing. You advised on fucking a project where there's pictures of fucking eggs and you got screwed? You're the you're the victim here? Million? He admits to me later that it might be a pretty close guess. He tells me via text, quote, I don't care if you tell people I sold a few million and leave it at that. Well, okay. Six million dollars, a few million dollars. It's millions of dollars, right? Yeah, millions of dollars. When you only put in $200,000. You didn't do anything. That's never been delivered. Doesn't work. Scammed people out of their money. How is he saying he's the one who's in the wrong? Well, in his view, what he did was not wrong. It might have been arguably unethical, but it wasn't illegal. And what Logan did, well, that was illegal. You can say the timing was bad and it was inappropriate to sell. But the reality is I bought tokens open market and sold them open market. So there was nothing illegal about that. Ethically, arguable. The rest that Logan did to me was ethically... He didn't buy it all open market because we, we showed him this video that he got a bunch of tokens early. Then he got mad when they were frozen out and he got some of them back. Plus he had founder tokens. So he had, he had not open market tokens that he sold... <laughs> Once it was over market. So that's already, that's, that's a problem. That's a rug pull. Now, what do I think of all this finger pointing? Well, I think it's pretty it wild. Really, oh, you're right. There's no one knew about it. You're right, right. It was technically open because <laughs> they opened it, but no one knew about it. I guess you're right about that. It was like a shadow market. Look like the lesser of two evils when you made millions of dollars and investors lost millions. I just do. Now, at the same time, I, I want to be fair to Crypto King. He's not the only one who sold here. But I also have to say, not everyone from the founders did sell. For example, Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul, which was a huge surprise. All their wallets Sheesh. that I tracked, you know, held onto their tokens, which is good. And, and to their credit for a game that doesn't work. But you know who did sell? Eddie Ibanez. Logan Paul believes in crypto zoo. He's hodling. And you know what? That passion, that belief, it's inspiring. It makes me want to get back into it. <laughs> you know what? Maybe Logan Paul was on to something. Maybe it's time <laughs> to get my diamond hands involved in that crypto zoo token. Buy low, get some eggs, hatch them. The guy who didn't pay the initial devs, the supposed MIT orphan, yeah. From what I could see, his initial wallet got a ton of zoo, sent it to a bunch of smaller wallets, and then sold off, kind of like Crypto King. And for my calculations, he made about $1.7 million. Jesus now, Christ. I have to tell you that like Jake, I tried to confront him and give him what the opportunity to defend himself, dude. but he never replied to my emails or my phone calls, and we're just going to have to leave it there. But we're not done with the money just yet because we still need to talk about the eggs. Remember, we talked about how they profited from ZooCoin, but they also made millions from eggs. 
According to their own internal mating notes, they plan to make about $3 million selling these eggs for 0.1 ETH a piece. And that's not far from what I calculated they actually did make, which was about $2.5 million. In the meeting notes, they say they're gonna clear expenses and then do payouts, but pay out who? They don't say. And these expenses are referencing an earlier note suggesting Eddie and Logan had both spent <laughs> $300,000 each, which I'll say is not a million dollars, but okay, we'll, we'll give it to them, right? So they got paid back their 600,000, but where does the rest of the money? So they didn't, so they didn't lose any money. They paid themselves off the egg tokens, which didn't have, they knew didn't work. So it took 300K for nothing to, and by the way, the expenses of the 300K sounds like just what he spent on buying zoo token. So he has tokens. Go. Well, on the Ethereum side, there's one payout for 364,000 to one wallet and another million dollars to another. They both are Coinbase addresses, so we don't know who exactly that is, but clearly someone on the team made a lot of money from these uh, NFT egg sales that do not work. And on the Binance smart chain side, where they also made money selling eggs, the zoo that was spent was supposed to be set aside for 50% to be burned, which they did, but the other 50% was supposed to be allocated for wildlife charities and crypto zoo development. Now, neither seems to have happened because all the money <laughs> is in a wallet that the team still controls. So there are open questions about, you know, where that money is gonna go and where the Ethereum money went. Did it go to Jake? Did it go to Logan? Did it go to Jeff? Did it go to Eddie? We don't know. But what I know for sure is that no one was innocent. Although there are certainly shades of guilt you can argue about because of course, not everyone did sell. You could look at that as the most important thing. Logan Paul didn't sell. Jeff, Logan's manager, didn't sell. But does that make them innocent? Well, I don't think so because they never built a game they promised people. Logan Paul specifically got millions of dollars spent on this game on the promise of the technology that he never built, that his team never built. And he never addressed the failure except to blame his developers who weren't paid. And you could say he promised to work backwards to fix it, but then never did. Yeah, but at the same it. time, it's clearly not just Logan's fault either because there are major team issues, right? You've got Eddie team selling of millions of dollars of Zoo and then allegedly not paying developers. You've got Jeff who was warned about Eddie, who kept him on the team anyways. And then after they fired Eddie, seems to also have failed to pay developers on time. And then you've got Crypto King himself who sold the most, but claims he was the guy who was scammed, which is the stupidest thing I've ever yeah. heard. It's just like Avengers assemble for the worst possible <laughs> team you can imagine to build a crypto game. And so unsurprisingly, it turns out a lot of these okay, guys- Okay, well there's no good team to build a crypto game, bro. It, you could get fucking Miyamoto himself to make Pikmin crypto and he's gonna fucking rug pull. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, if it's a crypto game, they're going to rug pull. It's just not even fucking Miyamoto. It's going to be Miyamoto, Reggie, and fucking Jesus Christ. And they're going to be fucking printing fake coins and rug pulling. This is just a particularly bad team. Backstabbed each other. And so finding a way to wrap this up was difficult because it's hard to assign exact proportions of blame. Because if you focus on any one person, you kind of miss why this project failed. CryptoZoo, at the end of the day- You, you realize video games already make so much fucking money. If you have a good video game, it is a license to print money. <laughs> if you are adding crypto on top of that, it is because you don't want to worry about the good part. <laughs> you just want the money. You want to skip the part where the game has to be fun or good or interesting. That's the only reason to put it on there. It did not fail because the price went too low. CryptoZoo failed because they never built a functioning game that they promised. Oh. Really the number one problem, even bigger than people selling millions of dollars of tokens, was that they never paid the developers on time, as boring as that is. <laughs> and as a result, the investors not only got rugged for millions of dollars, which is a problem, but they just didn't get the core thing they had bought from the beginning, which was not a crypto project, but something different. I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again, you keep using a word there, game. <laughs> You're not using like a project, it's a game. It's a game. It's a really fun game <laughs> that makes you money.
Dude, that clip is so funny because he's, he gives like a knowing nod like, man, I've played it. And it is funny. And like, he hasn't. Like, this is this is acting. This is lying. It's a, re it's a really fun game. It's a really fun game. And it's like, bro, you haven't played it because it doesn't exist. Ah, that's so, that's so cringe. That's it. That, to me, is the biggest scam in all of this. Yes, it's a huge problem. People stole millions of dollars. But it's a symptom of the larger issue, which is people is didn't it? actually care about the game or this, whatever you want to call it. They just cared about the money. And this is ultimately what happens when you have an influencer right. LARPing as a businessman. It's what Logan Paul's crypto scam zoo is up 1,500% since CoffeeZilla exposed it. <laughs> Welcome to crypto. <laughs> Oh my God. And if I analyze the blockchain, wait a second. If I analyze the blockchain and enhance and look at the tokens, I noticed that CoffeeZilla's wallet bought billions of coins before he printed out his own expose. <laughs> CoffeeZilla was the hidden sixth buyer. And he knew by exposing the fraud, it would go up so he could rug pull it again for one other time. Holy shit. He made off with billions. <laughs> the rare double rug expose rug. This goes all the way to the top, dude. Biden's wallet's on here. <laughs> Oh my God, dude. Biden shorted the token and then raised interest rates to crash the whole crypto economy in 2022. It's all a rug all the way down. <laughs> crypto King is Joe Biden. <laughs> What happens when you have a liar LARPing as a developer? And it's what happens when you have a shady crypto guru LARPing as a crypto king. You end up with a mess. And in my personal opinion, a fraud as well. And now that this thing blew up in their faces, these four seem to be dodging accountability faster than SBF dodges calls with me. Because I have reached out to everyone involved. I've tried to get all of their statements on things. So far, no one has taken accountability or offered to refund the victims at all. They're all hiding, pretending these victims don't even exist, but they do exist. And throughout my investigations, they've been the heartbeat of this whole thing. So I decided to close this investigations in a bit of a unique way. Rather than me deciding who's to blame or me deciding what you should think, I want to give them the last word. Everyone, everyone's to blame. Uh, Logan, in the sense of his, his poor management, it's his project. He still made these promises to people. I think everyone it is to blame, including Logan Paul, of course, because he was the, the one in charge of this. And yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that he didn't sell is one mark in his favor. I do like that he didn't sell. Um, but the whole thing exists because of him. Like, it's it's his fucking product. He's the one that promoted it. No, nobody would bought it if it wasn't for him. He, You can't make the promises before you have something to deliver. <laughs> Which is what he did. He told people it was great. He told people it was awesome. It was fun. It was going to make a lot of money. And he lied. He lied, a lied, a lied. And then, like, his lies carried way more weight than everyone else's because if Crypto King tells you something, it doesn't mean anything. But if Logan Paul, the guy you look up to and watch on YouTube, think of the raids on article. And also, the whole thing was planned as a scam from the beginning. Like, it's a, it's a fucking... He was responsible for all, the, all of this mess. Everybody has a big part and a massive massive cross to bear each one of them scammed the project in their own way and then and then off off to the sunset they went it was his job to check the team to make sure that everyone is working together to make sure that he is giving the funds of the people that put it into his project under his name to people that he actually trusts dude it's just like it's it's like uh you know it, Even if you get scammed by the developers, you just that's where you don't promise the game is good. 
You just don't say anything until you've got something to show. You don't. That that is verifiable before you launch. So that's where you're scamming. That's lying. Am I wrong to be unsubscribed to crypto buyers? Uh, uh, I think now you are, but again, I think it's a little um cold, and maybe even a bit of revisionist history for a lot of people in chat to say that you didn't. Uh, get a little bit of FOMO in 2021 or whatever. I think a lot of people did. I actually really liked Charlie's video on, um, I think Charlie reacted to my SBF video or whatever he was talking about. But he's talking about how he, like, he got FOMO in 2021 and got into crypto and uh, plenty of people did. And and like, listen, if, if a lot of cryptos are mooning and then you hear about one with your favorite influencer who's like a, who's huge, who's all in on it, it tells you he's super passionate about it, he's putting his own money in and it's real. And you're not a savvy financial investor, then you know it's pretty. Uh, even if it's a little dumb, it's not so incredibly dumb that they're off the hook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They made a lot of promises they didn't keep, which is which is a scam. And just because it's got the magic bean word crypto in front of it, <laughs> does not make it any less of a scam. Like it would be a, an illegal <laughs> act of fraud with a penny stock. And sound like when you put it on a fucking token, it's different. It's not. It's like what Jordan fucking. Uh, um, uh, what's the guy's name from Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> Belfort. Yeah, Belfort. It's like what Jordan Belfort did. The wolf. It's, uh, you know, it's no real difference. It's just like it's not regulated. So uh, they're like getting off without uh, legal enforcement, but they should. They, <laughs> this is illegal. This shit is banned for a reason uh, with, with most stocks. So I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's something I personally find pretty vile and i've been so happy to see people like sbf get actual punishment and i hope there's some kind of fucking follow through on some of this uh at least going forward so in my opinion if the team failed to perform that's logan paul to blame the community is destroyed people is angry they just want their money back they just want an sbf free sbf is free on bail right now but he's under house arrest and has electronic monitoring and that is awaiting trial. So SBF has not run. If he does run, his family will lose their house and the people that signed as guarantors will owe $250 million to the government because that's what the bond was. So he theoretically shouldn't run unless he truly wants to cripple his family for life financially. Uh, and so I think he's going to face jail time. I think I, I, I am. I, I read about it all the time. I'm very interested in SBF stuff. I think SBF is very likely Highly, I would make a bet. I would bet people <laughs> that SBF faces jail time. Um, uh, it just—it's all trending towards that. Um, you know what they should do is—is is lock him in a room, make him play league. <laughs> that would actually be so much worse. A hard stuck bronzy. Uh, by the way, everyone you're saying Shirley is the symbol that said Shirley when I said he'd get arrested. And then he did get arrested. And now they're moving the goalposts and saying, no, 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 but he'll never face jail time. And it's like, yeah, I think he will. <laughs> He's a very public, very obvious case with a lot of evidence. Plus two people close to him ratted on him. <laughs> I I think you're dumb. I think everyone that says Shirley is like just a baseline cynic, but a dumb cynic. <laughs> like not even a smart cynic. Like they don't even know what the fuck. <laughs> I think he's pretty likely. It's like, it's just, it's just everything adds up that he's going to jail. Uh, on sad situation is financial loss of celebrity. Give me about money too now. Uh, like seven years and you'll leave, but you're early on bail. Uh, he stole rich people's money, which is the worst crime you can make. He's 100 going to jail. Uh, yeah, I mean, he stole a lot of people's money from a lot of different fucking walks of life. And, uh, more importantly is he's no longer really rich. <laughs> he's not, he's not a billionaire. And so <laughs> he's easy pickings. He gets out of jail when he gets out of bronze. <laughs> SBF on a fucking lap a laptop with a fucking uh, trackpad. And we'll let you out when you get out of bronze. And he's just fucking stuck, hard stuck raging at his team he's got enters and feeders and fucking that's a life sentence <laughs> it's, a, it's a cruel and unusual length of sentence it's sisyphus dude that would be amazing he 
Hit gold and you're free. That would be so funny. <laughs> Poor cutie Cinderella. Locked up for life. <laughs> uh, we hardly knew her. Normal lies back. Reimburse, reimburse those loyal fans that they have, or try to rebuild the project. Actually, deliver on the project for those who are still holding their eggs. Like Bro, speaking of cutie, <laughs> Amaranth just posted on her alt that she bought like two million dollars of Amazon stock. <laughs> I think I sent the link to cutie and said like, you know, <laughs> see. <laughs> Uh, like she's girl boss in there, you know, whatever. And then cutie said, kill yourself. So, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, because it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. I am for those holding the, the zoo coins. So maybe they could just deliver what they promised and that would, give some redemption for this fiasco. He's not said a word. That, that's, that's, as, that's as bad, or almost as bad, as taking the money. It's the not coming out and just being a man about it. At least we deserve to know what was happening behind the scenes while we were waiting for almost a year and a half. The fact that we're hearing this information, not from Logan Paul, but from pretty much an investigator, it really says a lot. What did this loss mean to me? It meant a lot, not just personally, because I lost uh, quite a lot of money. My kid and also my my wife were invested. It was like uh, telling a kid that Santa doesn't exist or something like that, because she really... Sorry, what? <laughs> Why did you get your kid to invest? <laughs> in crypto zoo why did you get your kid to also he's lying santa does exist all right these guys this guy obviously doesn't know anything about anything because he bought a bunch of zoo token <laughs> okay santa's real guys don't worry guys relax this guy you can't trust because he bought a lot of zoo really believe in all that game. Uh, she really believed in Logan Paul. Kids look up to that kind of people. So it was some kind of broken dream. My mother had got, my mum my mom was invested. My Jesus. sister was also invested. So, I mean, my daughter even had a couple of the, the eggs and animals, which the, the loss for them hurts the most because obviously it's just not nice to see. For somebody to win, somebody has to lose. That's a gamble you take, whether you get into crypto or not. I got in knowing that I could lose, which is fine. That's on me. But I thought if I lost something, it would be because I sold at the wrong time or the game didn't earn as much as I thought it would and therefore my things weren't as valuable. But I nev you never go into it thinking, it's not, a, it's not something that they're going to just sell out from underneath you because they could make so much more if they actually delivered on what they said. Even if they delivered on close to what they said. And that's the thing is, you don't think they're going to rub you because there was so much money in a game wallet. Ultimately, at the end, the way I see this, it, it was fraud. <laughs> Logan could have could have put out the red flags, told people to stop investing more into it because people were in, people are still in, were investing to this project. People are buying right now. <laughs> very last minute, where where the ship was still. Uh, Although I guess buying right now doesn't make zero sense, right? Because the the popularity of these videos puts on enough public pressure that maybe they have to finish the product. The project is still terrible though. Even finished, it's terrible. But theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, if you actually are a crypto believer, they're probably gonna have to finish it. So you could buy it real low now. <laughs> and then Logan Paul like will have to shit out some developers. They have to pay him just to finish it just so he doesn't get... <laughs> just just sinking down the ocean and people plus the game is really fun it will make you money it. yeah if i was on a call with logan paul i would ask him where did his redemption arc go i think he was on a such a good streak going about his youtube career and boxing as well and it's sad to see that because of money once again we have degraded down to stealing from his viewers
what would I say to Logan Paul and his team if I could? Well, actually, I, I could because I have an NFT from, uh, from other projects that gives me the right uh, to see Logan Paul, <laughs> to meet and greet with him. And I will actually use that right uh, to tell him this story again, show him this video in front of me and see how he reacts when he sees that my family, my whole family and my kid are affected Holy with this shit. situation. He's got the fucking NFT for the situation. That's not human. You would think that Logan would have would have told Something his fellow followers, his loyal, NF, that his loyal will not be fans redeemed. that hey guys, back off. Red flag. Things things are things are there's turbulence in the water. No, not a single not a single word. Nothing whatsoever. To market products at children and knowing full well that his team is made up of people that he believes are shady characters. Yeah, he still goes on Forbes interviews and says the game the game is great for kids it's gonna <laughs> i think that's the most important thing we're doing paul said kids are gonna care about the blockchain because of my project <laughs> imagine if your first experience in the blockchain is with crypto zoo we're coming up with really really fun plans for six months a year down the line two years down the line like this could be one of the biggest things i do yeah, this guy's a fucking scammer, dude. This is all a lie. Especially because he's in the behind-the-scenes text. He knows that nothing's working. This is all a lie. I guess if it, you're a kid and this is your first experience on the blockchain, <laughs> I guess it did sort of teach you something, though. It taught you a powerful lesson <laughs> about trusting influencers. It taught you a powerful lesson about trusting the blockchain games. It's going to be amazing. Who loves it most? But I learned that, yeah. I learned, someone said in the chat, I learned that through RuneScape, bro. I learned about scams through an honest-to-God education with the game RuneScape. Where you fucking, someone says they'll duplicate your fucking party hat. <laughs> and you give them the party hat and they fucking never show up again, dude. Or they'll trim your armor. I'll trim your armor for free. Bro, that's how you learn. How, that's how I learned about scams. Honest-to-God, a little fashion way. I also learned how to scam because as I may have mentioned, that guy who stole my party hat, I created a fake girl account and then catfished him. <laughs> and I was only like 12 years old and I was trying to be his RuneScape girlfriend and I got the fucking party hat back, bitch. Easy clap, dude. Easy clap. Hmm. Their kids love it. Our developers' kids, all of them, cannot stop playing the game. I think that is, is inhumane the way that that side of it's been marketed. Knowing what's happened since, knowing that all of the people that were there from the beginning, like all of the guys that I'd speak to on, um, on a daily basis, that we, we've all just got nothing now. Ideally, I just want to say I'll see you in court. It's just crazy how much they keep talking about playing when there was there was no demo. There was no there's nothing. There was no gameplay at all ever. So they every time they say playing, they're lying. They haven't they haven't played anything. The game never existed. Shout out to the Coffee Zella patrons. That was a great series. That was an excellent, excellent series. Uh, wasn't Raynad's game delayed? Yeah, I mean, I think Raynad's game also has crypto in it, which is really sad. I believe that is a... Uh, I'm speaking from no insider knowledge. I'm just speaking from my understanding on the outside. Is that... Because the game was so expensive to make and it's taken so long, he basically had to take a crypto inclusion or sponsor to be able to afford to finish it. 
is my understanding, which sucks. I think the game could have been cool or might even be cool. I don't know. Uh, like I, I saw an early test way back in the day and it actually was playable and it was like, this looks cool. It looks fun. It reminded me of, um, what's that deck building, uh, physical card game? Uh, it starts with a D. I've played it and it reminded me of that. Um, Dominion. It's like Ryan made a Dominion. Logan Paul video supposed to be out today. Wait, Logan Paul has a video on this? Logan Paul. Logan Paul's last video is I'll Never Fight Again from a month ago. And his video before that is about his Polaroid NFT project where he took 99 Polaroids and then sold them as NFTs for millions of dollars. <laughs> oh, tomorrow? Interesting. We'll watch it tomorrow. Uh, I wanted to watch a video on... Well, we have to do, uh, we actually, dude, we probably have to watch Community right now. Yeah, we're going to watch Community. We'll watch that video tomorrow. Uh, community! One episode of Community to end the night. And then, I'm going to try to go live earlier tomorrow. I do need to finish uh, the predictions, though. Mm. Uh, we are on episode... If you guys don't know, we watch Community here on stream. One of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, as they release all their episodes for free on YouTube as part of promotion for the upcoming movie after the sixth season. Six, six season of the movie. Uh, we are in the middle of season three. The Well, probably the best season. Maybe two or three is the best. And uh, we are in some good episodes. Uh, two episodes ago, we watched um, just a fucking hilarious one. An absolutely hilarious one. The movement one. And today we're going to watch Urban Matrimony and the Sandwich Arch, which I believe is the Subway one, which is pretty funny. So we're going to watch that now. Uh, go get some snackies. I'm going to get a quick drink and then we'll watch that and then we will fucking enjoy ourselves. I miss Gifties. I'm so sorry. I actually am because I've been missing subs lately. I forgot. I lost my alert. I feel bad when there's not even an alert. Uh, Jimmy, thank you for the five gifties. Jimmy Wong, dude, the legend. I just drafted magic with Jimmy recently. It was very fun. Uh, he's the goat. And it's a pleasure to have him in my chat. Uh, I will be RB. I gifted five subs for a to finally notice me. We've literally hung out in person. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the subs. I do appreciate it. <laughs> I actually make people I hang out with in real life gift me subs. In every conversation I have in real life, I hand them a, a tablet <laughs> that has my sub, <laughs> the purchase subs button open on my stream. And I'm like, all right. And I'll say one line. And then every sub they gift, I'll keep the conversation going. It's a great way to, you know, monetize real life interactions. That way I'm always hustling, you know, to Grussell. Uh, all right. Literally one second, let me get a drink. And then we're going to watch. <laughs> 